boy from Jerome. <laughs> okay. Um, yes, Steve is not able to be here, which means we need a person to take some notes, which I'd be willing to clean up, but um, I'd like someone else to take the notes. I, I'll take, I mean, I can take Take notes and I'll clean I, them up. I won't right. do uh, extraordinary. Decision. You keep track of any job. decisions. Well, I'll, 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 I know who volunteers for what and what decisions are made. That's why well, I never, I don't understand the purpose of it. That's beyond that, frankly. Yeah, I just, <laughs> so, uh, yeah. five minutes, they're very important. Joining us for the meeting. Yeah, she said that I should do this. He's doing a PowerPoint. I said, do you have to later. set up? So I'm here. Very simple. I can, you can I'm basically at the table. He's lurking. Yeah. He's a lurker. <laughs> Okay, so Steve is not here. Also, Bill is traveling, and he left me a message that he's coming in November for sure, but he's not available. I don't know where he is. Um, and Kate, I don't know her story, but I know she's not coming. She so. wasn't able to come, but she said she would be here next month. Yeah, everybody's coming next month. We have enough. Oh, and Ayana said she was going to try to come. Did, did you send it to her? The, the email that I sent you, right? Was it Ayana? Somebody was, yes, it was. I send her the agenda. Mia Stewart, um, who is our high school person who was actually on, has moved out of the state. Oh, really? So, who? Mia Stewart. Oh, Mia. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> She's, I forget where, out west, I think. So, anyway, so we have an open decision. So, uh -huh. so um, what about uh, uh, the other student? Uh, she uh, said she was going to try to come. Ayana. Ayana. Yeah. Not sure to say. Yeah. Okay. Uh, does anyone, so, after looking at the agenda, which you've already looked at, um, want to put anything else on there or change anything? Uh, uh, Chief Carlson will not. Uh, well, I did not bring his report, but his he's he I had have reports from him. Too. Do you have them? Okay. Not everything, but I have an important one. Okay. okay. Um, just <laughs> just to say that he yeah his man died early. Um, so that's going to affect a little bit. Um, sure. One of the things is that the outreach coordinator that he was going to bring to the next house meeting, he will not be bringing that. I talked to Patty about it. Okay. So we could potentially be bringing one of our other mm -hmm. items. Okay. So, so that's something we should think about. And okay. um, wait. And did you want to add anything or change anything, John? You had your hand up. Yes. Um, so I think that uh, the project policies discussion is old business. Is what? Old old business. Um, in the Robert's rule sense. So then it would come before new business. Uh, for example, third um, from the, last. What? Third well, from last. Well, we're doing loose routes, so. We're doing bobs. <laughs> We just wanted to, we wanted to make sure we got since we discussed it last time that we got to discuss it again. Yeah, but I said good. it was like there was there's Yeah, that's the idea is that you deal with old business first because we've already discussed it, so it takes longer to start a new business. Yeah. Okay. Do you have strong feelings about that? Do you that it goes personally in the Um so it would just come after reports. Okay. So it would come after the report for the mayor's court working group, I believe. That's where it is, I think, after it was. Uh, no, right now. No, no. Okay, all right. Okay. Yeah. I, I see what you're saying. All right. Yeah. So we relocated to after the report from the mayor's group. Okay. Yeah. Uh, then um, Judy Kittner called and mm -hmm. someone actually requested all of our minutes, which is yes. a good reminder that we are a public, we are under public records, we are official. So whoever's facilitating has to make sure the minutes are approved and also they go to Judy. And so I've been working with her to complete them all. So going way back to July, <laughs> I was going to say, do you approve I the July minutes? Well. <laughs> I was not at the July meeting, so I cannot vote on those minutes. Oh, Ooh. Uh -oh. those are the rules. You can actually do those things of adopting, even if you're not there. Really? Which it makes no sense to me because I thought. I bet nobody's going to vote against them in the past. Yeah, I won't matter. But do you have extra copies? 
I said everyone copies, yeah, but everyone yeah, have they, a chance they to read them. They're, 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 uh, they're they're really the, high, the highlights were the highlights were Ellis's presentation. That's <laughs> right. right. Of Stop there. You say no more. <laughs> of considerable research <laughs> and presenting yes, the pros and cons of the prosecutor. That was our main business. Really. And then the recommendation. Oh, your your presentations are never sad. <laughs> you always have a big smile. Sorry. <laughs> and our our conversation via Marianne about getting the uh, council to think better about how they're doing their their end of it. And so that those are the highlights. Um, I make a motion to uh, accept. Okay. You accept the July minutes. Yes. Second. So. Approved. Aye. Aye. Okay. Yes. Moving Thank on to September. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So moving on to September minutes. That's more recent. We did not have another speech. So. I move to accept the minutes. There's a motion to accept the September minutes. Anybody second? Second. So moved. Okay, all in favor? Of the we should have discussion just to be you know, bottom like but I don't think we should spend the time on it. Just say something else before it comes up. We should have discussion after the second. Uh, okay. All the questions? Aye. Aye. Yeah, uh, okay. okay. September minutes are now included. And I'll send these to Judy so we're, we're caught up today. Um, okay, uh, Judith and I did a report, and we were we are pleased to have Dave's support in the audience. Mm -hmm. I had intended to be there. That did not happen. We had yeah. been with Abby too, and I was in Toledo for a funeral that morning. Yeah, you're excused. Yeah, that was a good yeah. But I have to say I appreciate the effort you put into it. That was a lot yeah. of work. I mean, well, I now. think it was good for us to look at what we've done. We actually have done very much more than well. It's good for council to see it in one. One that so that was good. That was. I don't remember any particular issues. But following my reporting, uh, we have made the point that we we want to move towards um, policy work on the part of the council. For example, we made recommendation. They accepted it. Then it jumped to implementation. Usually, the chief deciding what to do. But if the chief were to, let's say the taser policy, the chief were to disappear, get another chief, that new chief could then change things. So the idea was that our recommendations, as they are approved, should somehow be put into a more permanent policy format. Right, and well, and Pat and I and Alice met with Patty and Chief Carlson um, and after our last meeting. And we and and Chris Conard was on the phone, and we are now I think in agreement with some kind of uh, council policy. They will it will become a piece of legislation basically of some sort. It may be different depending on what the issue is. So we're going to go through um, the things that, like the Taser policy. Um, the next meeting, what was going to be discussed was Chief and Patty have been working on. A proposal for a half-time position that's coming out of the idea of a social, a police social worker. It's not, it's not the same thing, quite honestly. But, um, but it's, it's going to be. You know, council asked staff to make a recommendation. This is their recommendation, um, and so um, it was going to come to our next meeting. So we're going to try to take up individually at every, every one of the council meetings, as long as there's space, the items that have not been put into legislation. Um, so that's what it was going to be, but since Chief's dad died and he's uh, Patty felt, you know, he's not going to be prepared. So I was going to suggest, so we're going to have a slot at the next meeting that I, I was wondering about, I and mean, maybe we need to wait to the end of the discussions tonight, but I was wondering about the date, the data, the presentation on the data report, because, um, okay, well, let's hold that. So let's hold that. So we have a space. At this meeting for something, or the next thing that may be the taser policy. Okay, I want to give um, ahead of our other discussion a, a report of the report uh, about Chief Carlson, and um, he mentioned several times um, 
in different uh, venues, different places, that the um, general orders were a mess. I mean, they had been cut and pasted. Every police chief had cut and pasted. Some of them were out of date. Some of them were from Miami. They were from the sheriff's office. Some of them were from Dayton. Some of them were from, you know, they were all over the place. And um, These are regulations? Yeah, the book of orders is basically of all of the order. policies that the, and all okay. of the rules that the officers need to follow. And it's all their stuff. So he, he did some research, and with Patty's approval, he has joined something called Lexi Pro. Lexi Pro. I like the graphic of this yeah, guy. Right. Like, oh, with his stick. Let me but, see. <laughs> oh my gosh. I know. Lexi Paul. Oh, I'm sorry. Lexi, Lexi Paul. Yeah. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> uh, law enforcement, state specific, public safety policy content, and integrated policy training. So it's this, you know, management uh, company, online company, and they do come up with um, federal, they have federal, state policies, statutes, case law, law enforcement, they have daily training, I mean, they have all this stuff, you know, how these online companies will deliver all this stuff. Um, so he seemed pretty excited about it because he was feeling despair about trying to get the, you know, the orders in, in some, any kind of shape. And this is a different kind of cut and paste, but it seemed like that was uh, something that matched federal and state policies. So, so this is drag and drop. Yeah, drag and drop. But it also includes um, some training things, opportunities, web, uh, different kinds of web webinars and other kinds of things. And the thing that was great about that, oh, it offers monthly quizzes, oh, webinars and best practice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. But what was what he was happy about was the train these training options. Um, you can get a pot of credit for them. Now yeah. our officers have to have X number of credits every like year. Like CEUs. Right. Yes, yeah, like same thing. Yeah, same thing. And they have to have it. So this is one way they can get some of it without it. You know, going to Columbus or whatever. So you can look it up on the web if you like. Lexipol.com. I backslash law enforcement. So he wants to use this as a source for training of material? Well, training on policies. On so that people feel uh, that officers would be informed this is the policy. This, uh, for example, uh, a more uh, recent issue is uh, cameras. Right. So they'll say, they will, they will, if he does, so he'll say, what's the policy or something, and they go back and they find federal, and they find all these samples, and they find out what the state of Ohio Ohio Gen Gen Attorney General says, and then they send that to him, and then he can have a little training with his officers. But he, I mean, it, it's he still has to decide what the policy is. Sorry. And it's, I mean, it's like a library of resources and materials, but That's somebody has to I synthesize it to decide what is our take on this. Am I right? That would be it, and that yes. was one question I had, but I didn't put it to him of what's the level of oversight? Like, who can look at these and say? This is what we really want, or this is not exactly what we want, or right. um, the community, the community police piece of it, in terms of feedback or discussion, or so they have this as content, and then they're also still working on the on the collaborative, the Ohio collaborative. So maybe I mean I would assume you know if there are ten policies, eight of them will just be routine and we yeah. don't really care about but two of them we may actually care about. There might be this sort of thing where you go one way or another in, in ways that are significant. So sh should we somehow ask the chief to let us know what policies he's in the process of kind of like ironing out so we can figure is out whether it's something we want to be involved in? Is it lock, stock, and barrel an updated book? That's what that's basically it's, it's, what it is. Yeah, I don't it think like he's just picking and choosing. No, I this, think is, this looks like a, a way to to take the book we have to organize it to set it up so that it, it does. It's going to be just. It is based it's on be using their stuff. Case law and on, so it has the legal backing. Um, then it's got scenario-based training bulletins that link directly to your policy manual. So I mean, it's not like we're using somebody else's. 
Well, it looks like it could somehow right. upload our information. But I think Ellis's point Without is looking at good. more, I, I, yeah. I think that's Ellis's point is important, mm -hmm. which is we don't always agree with federal or state policy on, mm -hmm. or even case law on the use of tasers. Is it yeah, really it's a case law. You find the stuff you like that supports the position you want to take, and that's what you say. So. I'm wondering why this is something that this task force has to deal with because yeah. it seems like this is something yeah. he's using to put his documentation in order. Yeah, that's all I'm getting out so, of it. So, I mean, that's not an issue for Yeah. Well, but if it's a, like, for instance, if he had used this on the ta if the taser policy was part of this, and they happen to like a taser party, policy that says a little electric shock is good for everybody, then we would have an issue with that. So, it could be, there could be another policy that's in the bunch of policies he's looking at using this as a tool that we might care about. And so all I'm saying, I'm not saying we have to insert ourselves into the process, but somehow we should at least know what he's working on in case it's a policy we do care about, in which case we can take a look at it. Is he actually working on it, or is he just being handed a book? It's um, actually Sergeant Matt who is working on it. For the most part, as far as I understand. So there are I mean, that's exactly as I know. I don't feel like I know all, a lot. already exist some thing, some repository of policies, however. Well, it is the general together. orders thing. We have it, and it's a mess. Everybody agrees it's a mess. It's so, so that exists. Like He's using this as a tool to help clean that up. That's yeah. Right. Exactly. The issues that we're concerned about, Taser, is a, is a good example. You know, it would make sense to have some communication with them about. But I'm sort of wary of taking on yet another thing to try and overlook that the police are doing because let's wait till they finish and see what they've got and issue and, and, and interact on the specific policies as they come up like you're talking about. Yeah, I mean, I, I want to respect his, his ability to do his work and, and, and say, at some point we need to know what he's done and see if there's any, if we have any concerns about it. So I, I would, you know, defer to others. As that to seems to me to be something stuff. downstream from today. Well, okay, you said that. I guess my only quick question, and I guess this is where I'm kind of thinking, uh, you know, Chief Carlson, to the extent that he understands what the resources are out there, is this the resource that we want to use? You know, usually these kind of resources, there's more than one. Uh, there's there's different ones. At least well, that's true in nursing. Kind of, I mean, they've done it. They bought it. They've already done the research, and this is what they've This is what they got. And they, so then I think if, if that's the case, then I just think, you know. Yeah. But this makes even more clear why it's so important that, like, the taser policy and these policies that we, we are weighing in on, that, that, they they, that, that those do not change. Because this is the kind of thing where if we didn't have it set in stone, it could yeah. pretty easily. I, yeah, I, I'm not seeing yeah, we I don't think know. I can't answer that. I'm not seeing that as an issue, but we hope I look at it more. I can say that. And how we know how Sergeant Amber is using it. Well, one reason they're a mess is that every chief who's come in has changed them. I, yeah, I so understand. that's why we're saying, you know, mm -hmm. if we could make it more, mm -hmm. you know, something that can't be changed. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. The graphic is so encouraging. <laughs> I know. <laughs> yeah. I mean, Hale did assert to us that there was only like four policies in existence. Were there many, even? <laughs> yes. And the, what he sent us was, you know, dozens. So I assume that they're basically all she failed. They're mostly she failed. They're mostly the Montgomery County Sheriff Department. Right. But there's others too. Yeah. Okay, but we can let it go for now. Just set it on the shelf for right now. Um, okay. Um, Mayor's Court, take it away. Well, uh, What's it's happening? been, but, you know, Debts and busyness and travel and whatnot—it's been hard for us to get together. Uh, but in the end, you know, there's this agreement. I would say that we need to make we need a prosecutor. The format, the uh, scope, etc. You know, was you know, done a bunch of different ways. You know, and you have your opinion, which you expressed at a meeting. I wasn't here, so I don't know. And I mean, you said you weren't there for it, so we haven't been able to you know go back and forth on that. But I, I haven't heard anybody say, "Oh yeah, no, prosecutor was a stupid idea." And there are also uh, issues having to do with mayor's court, and Laura was talking about some of these things about some, um, I don't know, Laura, if you wanted to go into a little bit more detail about that, about the... Well, 
difficulties that, pe that we could run into if we continue doing it the way we're doing it. Um, I mean, it, it depends on the level of protection you want to give people. People have rights, you know, they deserve to know what their rights are and have them read to them appropriately. And most marriage courts actually have them sign a paper with their rights. It's actually one of the few records they keep. They have all their rights listed and written and they sign them. Um, you know, um, so. I think professionalization is important for protecting people's rights, and all the all the rights apply: constitutional, you know, procedure, evidentiary rules, trial rights. Um, and you know, I was in Mayor's Court last night, and there's a case that came up. For example, a couple of cases that really gave my heart a few skipped a beats, a few beats, and um, felt badly for people because they. Um, that could have gone differently for them. What um, kind of cases did you say? Uh, one was uh, a, a going around the school bus, and the guy came in, and he, um, first of all, he wasn't sure how to play, and the mayor was in the unenviable position of having to coach him through that, which is not his role. And then the primary evidence had to do with the bus driver, and, and uh, the bus was stopped and, and, uh, over by the Children's Center, and kids weren't getting off, and kids weren't getting on, and the bus was there, and traffic was backing up, and nobody knew what was going on, and nothing was happening, and the guys kind of find, then he heard the bus beeping, like the bus, he believed it was the bus driver beeping, and he thought, maybe that means I go around, and so he went around. Well, too bad for him. So the bus driver ended up reporting it. Well, so you know he comes in and pleads no contest eventually. And um, so in a trial, you know, he would have the right to have that bus driver come, and he would have the right to cross-examine that bus driver to say, "Hey, were you beeping or weren't you beeping?" And I thought you meant this and. Well, anyway, the bus driver didn't show up. And I'm not even sure the officer showed up. I wasn't sure who ticketed it. Um, but he ended up with coaching from the bench, playing no contest, and then he was found guilty. When, in fact, he needed a, a lawyer to help him plead not guilty, put it off for trial, get the bus driver there, figure out you know, what was going on. And if you were beeping for the kids to come out, isn't it true that perhaps uh, the first car in line would think you're beeping to signal, go around, and you don't know what's happening. So no, what did guilty? What did guilty? Or a uh, so that was an M2, I think. Okay. I was just going to look at my notes. I mean, he ended up getting fined and court cost. So uh, the other well, well yeah, I mean, I did get, get my notes. Work. I was taking notes, but I'm trying to find. But I just, I'm just curious what these things cost people. Well, the court so, costs are 80. And our court costs, thankfully, are cheaper than going to Xenia, where they're like, you know, 150, 160. Um, so he wasn't informed that he had a right to a lawyer? So, so, this is another thing I want to bring up, is that there's an announcement from the bench that if you want a lawyer, you have to go to Xenia. But that's not true. Well, I would suggest that we, everyone here, if it's a jailable offense and you can't afford an attorney, one will be appointed for you. That's a public defender. And so have we ever, and, and I haven't made the call yet, but I'm going to, dear public defender, is it possible for us to have one of you come down here on mayor's court night? And even if it costs us a hundred bucks to get them down here or something, just to have them here. Because we, they processed about four cases, five cases last night. I mean, and two of them needed lawyers for sure. Another gal, African-American gal, rightly pled not guilty, and she's going to come back. She didn't have a lawyer, but I, I you know, she pled not guilty because she wanted her day in court, and so she did the right thing without any coaching. But, um, so, uh, you know, so, so that's where, the, and the mayor should not be in the position of either, and he was in the position of questioning what witnesses there were when the time was there, because there's no prosecutor to 
question and present the case. The mayor is supposed to be the impartial um, decider of the case without doing the pre presenting or the questioning of witnesses, and nor coaching them on how to or possible ways to believe. So, so this is the problem with with informality is you don't have enough personnel to properly protect people's rights. So one idea that came that I remembered and kind of glommed on to, mostly because it seemed affordable and somewhat sensible, would be if we had uh, a prosecutor on, sort of on retainer, so if we knew that the case was something complex or you know more than just running a red light or whatever. Um, Parking. Sorry? Like it was jailable. Yeah, then we could call that prosecutor, but we wouldn't have them all the time, which would be a big expense. I mean, no, I, don't I, don't agree. I don't agree. I don't agree with that. I don't okay. agree. I mean, you know, it's only a couple of nights. I mean, they, you know, we were there maybe an hour. Uh -huh. And, you know, if you even paid by the hour, 150 an hour, 200 an hour, well, you're going to maybe have, have how often do we have marriage for? Sorry. Twice a month. And it's usually relatively quick. Okay. And you're probably yeah. talking, you know, 500 a month no. to have somebody no. here. And again, with a public defender, their their job is to pro uh, represent people that can't afford it. Right. So it's just a matter of logistics of getting them here, and there may be no. some small no. expense of that. But um, the hearsay piece, I thought, was you know, was significant. Well, yeah. What we're talking about. Well, so, you know, like the bus driver case, um, the guy's convicted on hearsay because the bus driver went in the room. The police didn't see it. The person pled guilty? Well, no, only guilty. because, again. Well, but okay. But so I they mean, were convicted based on But he's, you know, no. instead of really pleading guilt, or no, he ended up saying no contest, but really there was a question of fact. And it should go to a little yeah, hearing because I'm, you know. So, and, and, Laura, I, did, yeah. I don't disagree with your due process arguments, with the points you're making. I agree with all that. Sometimes people actually make the rational decision that they just want to get this thing over with. I've seen tons of clients stand up and do no contest. They're in and out. It's over. They're pleased. It, it works for them. So, I mean, you do need to understand that that's a factor in real world courts. I, I know you know that. The, where, the place I've been going with this is the idea that we don't need a prosecutor there all the time. In my research on this, and just in talking to people about how other mayors' courts work, frequently what they do is they'll schedule arraignments. Everybody appears, no prosecutor. People that either have a disputable case or actively want to dispute it uh, get sent over to a later session when there is a prosecutor. So you, that, that's how you can sort of save some money and get maybe a little more efficient uh, in the use of your prosecutor. I know that, uh, for instance, the woman that teaches the mayor's court training runs her mayor's court like that. Um, so that seems to be a reasonable way to think about getting our feet wet with this. I'm just reluctant to see us jump whole hog into highly professionalizing this court that's been such a, uh, kind of a laid back, informal thing for so long. Uh, and then if, if that works or we see problems with doing it that way, then you think about, ex you know, like, okay, we need to prosecute every second. Uh, but I think you can do it with that having that voice of all the time, every time courts and such. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, uh, so I think the one thing that we can all agree with, Corian, is that, like, people can't be told that if they want a public defender that they need to ask to be sent to senior municipal, like, they have a right to a public defender, so, um, that should be changed true? immediately, yeah. Yeah, if you want, if you, uh, well, yeah, <laughs> I mean, and order. so what we've done is for convenience, I mean, it's a convenience for us, I think, so, and it's a way to kind of strong arm people, and if you want a public defender, you can't have the mayor's court, yeah, which I don't mean, like. They like eliminating and consensual. And, you know, but the prosecutor on the, if I'd been the prosecutor on the bus driver case, I would have said, oh, we've got a question of fact. Let's get, let's set this and make sure we get the bus driver here. Or I'll, as a prosecutor, I'll call up and say, hey, bus driver, what, why were you beeping? Why were you beeping? And maybe the case gets dismissed before it even gets to the mayor because she said, yeah, I was beeping and I, I can see why the guy thought I sh he should go around. Okay? That's a good prosecutor who does justice. Okay? 
It doesn't even get to the mayor because there's a little bit of phone calling done to figure out what the case was about. I'll give you another one. Another case that came up yesterday had to do with a hit and skip. A lady hit a parked car. Parked car belonged to a friend of hers. You can't shut the door. Sorry. Oh, I didn't shut it all the way. It's correct. You need a sign <laughs> saying, come on in. I think you need to open but, you know, and then she, she didn't call right away about it, and it was seven, eight hours later, and, you know, not reasonable. She ends up getting to hit the skip. She's very remorseful, car belonged to a friend of hers. What resolution? A restorative justice resolution would say, hey, does friend really care? Uh, you know, it is seven out, you know, she apparently knew whose car it was. Is that reasonable versus somebody you don't know? M1, $500 fine, uh, $80 court costs. Fortunately, no talk of getting a friend in or restorative justice or anything like that. And now, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm just saying how things could go one way or they could go another way. Again, prosecutor could call up the friend, the, vic the victim, the guy's car gun, and say, hey, do you care, or what do you want? And they could be hopping mad, or they're like, oh, that's so, and so, yeah, I don't care. Okay? So these are how, this is how it goes. But she shows up again. I was, I almost jumped up and said, do you need a lawyer? <laughs> because I'm like, don't plead guilty to that. We don't have, we haven't developed it enough. You know, or you at least should have here and have the guy. Right. So and anyway, the, the mayor can do that. The mayor can. No, the like, mayor cannot. The mayor should not be doing that. No, the no, mayor is a prior of fact. No, he should not be no, the mayor, the the mayor can look at somebody who goes, well, gosh, yeah. I don't know, or I'm not sure. And the mayor goes, wait, if you're not sure you did this, then we're setting it for trial. Right. That's I've seen no. judges do this all the time. Arraignments are done all the time without and that would still be done. That would still be done. Should I ask him how to plead first? Yeah, yeah. Well, gonna, absolutely. Um, okay, there's a couple of things to, to sort out. I think at some point, and maybe I just told myself this, but I think I heard other people say that right. we might post, <laughs> we might uh, delay some of our final decisions until after the election because. Um, there'll be a new mayor, and he or she will, you know, have some influence about how these things work. But I, 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 and I maintain think that our policy should not be set based on who, who is yeah. the mayor. It needs to be set yeah. on okay, what well, is Well, that's right. an important point. Yeah, yeah I can not hear the mayor is because we can't that. guarantee who. But what I hear is that the subcommittee is not get a new mayor, yet in agreement about. I don't think we're in a position down. to make the recommendation. I mean, I, I agree with both of I agree. Uh, Laura wrote something that went to all the committee members. I, I mean, I, I, I totally agree, and everything that I have done is consistent with that about having a prosecutor there. My, my, I would like to keep the mayor's court. And I am, from what I, the, the research I did for very early in the process, I, I and, and the guy that Ellis had come to this committee very early after we started meeting, um, I mean, he made, I mean, you all were there, I mean, yes. he made a very, very strong case that if we, if you yes. keep running this mayor's court the way you're doing it, there are going to be no mayor's courts uh, allowed because it is not a proper way to run a court where one man is the the I judge and you didn't the like jury him. and the prosecutor. <laughs> <laughs> Remember how you didn't like him? Yeah, it's it's fine. <laughs> now, I, didn't, I didn't like him because he was, uh, because I wanted to keep the mayor's court and he was basically that, but then I called all of those mayor's right. courts, they all have You've done a lot of prosecutors, You've they, done a lot of every one of them, and they, they, they've had them for 30, 35 years and they were appalled that we would do it without a prosecutor. And so, and uh, the I other thing, okay, but I, I think we don't really need to do the arguments because we all know them. We know that most of the committee feels pretty strongly that it would make a lot of sense. It would be important to make a recommendation that we hire a prosecutor. And then Ellis is uncertain, or he thinks of he thinks of variations of hiring a prosecutor. I think I think you'd want to have a conversation about an approach that would be efficient and cost effective. Uh, and serve justice in deciding how you 
use a prosecutor. I don't think we need a prosecutor in court every moment that the court is in session. But even you well, agree that we need a prosecutor in the I think let's take turns. Let's take turns, turn. David. Let's take turns because everybody, talk. other people want to talk to. Yeah. Judy. Okay. Judy. That's fine. Okay. So. Um, Oh, now I've lost my train of thought. Let's see. Okay. I, I think, um, I mean, I, I think the, uh, we don't want to just give a recommendation of a prosecutor. I think we want to write a job description for that prosecutor before we bring the recommendation. Because if we don't, then staff is going to write that job description. And given how important it is, the, the, the job description is going to be very, very important that we get the kind of prosecutor that we want. So I would suggest that we don't just make a recommendation because then what council's going to say is, okay, we're going to hand it to staff to work that. And that's what we're going to end up with something. Uh, I mean, it's, okay. we're going to end, so that would be my suggestion. Okay. John, do you want um, to up? Yeah, so I mean, I think if you guys want to start developing a recommendation for um, hiring a prosecutor, that's fine. Um, I, would it, this would interrupt the current conversation, but may I move that we direct the mayor's court to uh, committee? No, to de to develop a recommendation um, to change the I mean to change the policy about the defendant uh, about the public defender. Or do you guys feel like you could just like tell the guy like, hey, you need we to need, let well, him we know. need to look into it a little more. I mean, we haven't looked into that at all as far as what resources are available. That's to a whole us. new topic. That's a whole new topic. Well, Let's but you guys understand that. Yeah, it is, but right now we're trying to do this topic, so we'll come back to that in a minute. Okay. Al, finish. Okay. I, I heard, you know, Ellis is talking about how you use the prosecutor, and you were talking about writing a job description. I, I, I don't think, I mean, I think we, we can't totally manage the way that prosecutor, prosecutor is used. I think it's going to depend to some degree on who is elected mayor. I mean, it depends on the 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 background of the person who is the mayor and so the how that person is used is going to be is going to be somewhat at the discretion of the mayor the uh, and and so I think it's a mistake to try to define it in a, a, a pre you're going to do it exactly this way but the the other thing I w was going to say that in talking with some of the police officers there a couple of them are very angry at the way at the mayor the way it's currently done because the mayor according I mean I don't know but, but according to them yeah. the the mayor in, in some occasions has changed the charge which the police officer made for, and and they said he can't do that but I mean, prosecutor, prosecutor can do it but, right, but do from it. the from the standpoint of the ORC the mayor is a prosecutor they are a prosecutor and judge in one person that's not no. true, John. No. Okay. I'd, like no. Make, okay. I'd like to make a motion. <laughs> no. That's the whole problem. That's not true. I would like to make a motion. Think about, if you want to give no direction to what that prosecutor is, think the kind of prosecutor we could end up with. So I want to make a motion that we, that the mayor's court committee develop a proposed, <laughs> develop a job description for how the mayor's, how a prosecutor would function in a mayor's court. That's my proposal. Is there a second? I think that's what we're trying to do. We can write the job. Is there a second for this? Is there a second? There a second? Uh, a second. In favor? So, so it's repeated again. Yeah, yeah. I think that's what we're trying to do. Well, it sounded like, well, I, I think the committee should say, yes, that is what we want you to do. We don't want to just make a recommendation to council to get a prosecutor. Give me your motion again. Mayor's court group okay. will The, the mayor's the court group will develop a draft job description that will come back to the committee for a prosecutor. And I mean, part of that, well, that's the motion. The mayor's court for the. Then there's a second. Was there a second? Yeah, there's a second. Okay. Yeah. The prosecutor, I think, is only part of the, you know, for lack of a better phrase, cleanup of the mayor's court process, in, in, in my opinion. We're talking about incorporating restorative justice and potentially a team court. We've got village mediation. We need to look at public defenders. Public defenders, you know, yeah. all of these but have to go together. So just coming up with a, just coming up the job description of the prosecutor without considering how it fits in with the rest of that is premature. But those those other programs get run out of the prosecutor's office. So absent a prosecutor, they don't exist. Correct? They would be part of the 
they would be part of the description of the, yeah, but not course. just job description, but the program. I, yeah. I might even say. The yeah, the job description say the prosecutor shall use alternative shall disposition use tools and blah 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 blah. Do people feel able to take that on or at least start chewing on it? Seems, I think we should me. vote. I think okay. we should vote. Oh, uh, we've, we've had a motion, we've had a second, we've had some discussion. And all those in favor of second it? John. I think John did. All those in favor of the mayor's court subcommittee working on a job called a job description, job description for a prosecutor who brought forward as part of the recommendation. Or that right. We got it. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's find out whether they were opposed or abstaining. I'll, I'll, I'll oppose. Opposed? I'm confused. Calling yeah. me confused, so I guess that's an abstention. Because I think that's what we're doing. Well, good. And I think putting the title job description on it is getting way, is way premature. Because we're still trying to figure out what, yeah. what actions need to take place in mayor's court before we start defining a job. We need, this is, this is a much we're not going to finish with our prosecutor discussion yet, so yeah. jumping in and saying, go do this with the prosecutor is premature. I thought you were ready to make a recommendation. No. 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 Okay. I don't think we are. Yeah. Well, and, and, I mean, I think part of the, the idea of a job in. description is... <laughs> he doesn't know. He's not a <laughs> <good process. laughs> Part of the job I mean, description part of what Ella said is received. to actually put some things on paper. We've just been right. talk, 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 talk yeah. for a long time. So and we have a lot of things on paper, and they keep getting... Okay. So, well, and the other the other thing is that, you know, I want to make a you know last time we were talking about this, I mean, one of my main concerns I know other people share it uh, is that we need to get a sense from council about what kind of format et cetera we need to create recommendations for because initially they were we made recommendations and got a bunch of different responses so I don't want to spend a lot of time creating recommendations. This is what we is got gonna, clarified at the more. last meeting. If we if we support a proposal and it goes to council, it will be discussed and council will make some kind of a decision. And um, and I know my sense is this idea of a prosecutor on retainer has some support in council, but you know it's not been fleshed out. What what's the exactly how they're going to function? What kind of person we want? I think that's very important. So we okay, can just, just make whatever recommendation, whatever format we want, you go do it. Well, did you you know the you have a copy of the recommendation development guidelines? Yeah, use them. I must have missed that. Uh, I think I missed. I think it was a meeting that I wasn't at. So okay. Well, we, I can we, send you a copy. I can send you all a copy of those. Okay, John. Let's stop because we're running out of time. We have a lot of other things that on the agenda. But what I heard and our secretary can reinforce. There was a motion which was seconded and which was passed, which, which was that the mayor's court subcommittee. Um, put more focused effort into starting to write up what a prosecutor's job description would look like within the context of a recommendation council. Does that sound close? Yes, but the no. motion said we'd be brought back to this group. Yeah, we'd be brought to this group. Write a job description yeah. for a prosecutor. Right. Uh, do you want any, I mean, no, is there that fuzziness? Do you have any questions more, I guess? About what else? Yeah, I'm so not understanding Cindy's uh, your confusion. I I didn't know where you guys were at. I thought you were saying you were ready to make this recommendation. No, is there any we guidance? don't even agree on what the prosecutor. We, we, we all kind of, sort of, maybe agree that we need something called the prosecutor, but how that would function in the confines of mayor's court, we do not agree. I don't consider that a job description. It is not. But you said we could have that conversation in the context of writing a job description. That's the way I took this motion. In other words, we got to iron this stuff out in order to put it in the job description. It just gives us a structure to operate in. Okay, you, the think, mayor's court subcommittee will carry on. Yes, that's what we're doing. No, I think, I think yeah, that's that's what what no, wait, wait, wait. I think there's so so two things. One, yes, it might come back to us, and we might end up disagreeing with it. It's easier to react to something that's on paper. Yes, yeah, um, we said that. Okay, all right, that was already said. Um, we need to go on. In terms of how it would function, yeah, I guess that's in the job description. All right, okay. sorry. The mayor's carry on, mayor's subcommittee. Yeah, please. We already get in the same way. So, did, do we do that? Yeah, we can appreciate it. Yeah, so hard. Do we do that motion? It's going to be faster. We did, we just went through that. Cool, cool. And then also, we also express our appreciation to Laura for being a resource and continuing to 
stick and with this. Will you also, yeah, and you, if you would put her name on the distribution list, like, um, okay. um, for yes, your agenda yes, and stuff. Yeah. I'm still like that. I've asked Judy Kentner, and I'm, I'm sorry. I I'm gonna get that's your email. Here, no, I've got your email, right? Yeah, my name. And she okay, we're moving on now to um, yeah, so revisiting the proposal to wait, create new policy projects. My, we never came back to my topic. Which topic? Oh, about yes, looking into the public defender. We did. We did. Well, it's been referred to. We'll talk about that. Including it's public defender. Way too defense. specific. Oh, okay. yeah. Yeah. We have we so have covered some water. Monica, just do it now without being told. Wake up. Okay. Um, the, we're going re revisiting the proposal to create new policy projects. And in our previous discussion, it was pointed out that since we're starting in on our final year, year two, that when we went back to look at the resolution from the council, the charge for this committee, there were some pieces that we thought were significant that haven't yet oh, been sorry. addressed. So, sorry? Full, full business first? Yeah, no, no, she's introducing I'm doing oh, it. <laughs> if you would listen. I thought that this sounded exactly like how you would have introduced it. I'm sorry. Apologize. Apologize to the chair. Okay, sure. well, we're now talking about police work. No, we moved the her the, the, we third, did, the third from the last bullet. When, when we maybe you hadn't come in yet, when we right. changed the agenda to put this because it's old business, we put this after the report. We just finished. The goal of business. This is policy project. This is page Post. number two. Uh, uh, the second page of your book right there, of your handle. <laughs> it's two and three. It's, it's, the actual policy projects yeah. are okay. three. Okay, and then to repeat myself, we had a previous discussion on this, and our point was, shared point was, that as we go into year two and we look back on our committee charge, there were some pieces that we thought were important that hadn't yet been addressed. So now Judith and John have come up with an idea of how we would look at some of those new pieces. Take it away, whoever's doing it. Um, do you want me to start to, to, to go over, or do you want to start? Oh, I can do it. you want to start at the beginning and then, okay, I'll go over the, the actual policy project. So, yeah, so this is just the process um, by which we make it. Yeah, so uh, the last time we, we brought this here, um, I feel like there was some concern that uh, we would end up starting policy projects that we didn't have the uh, sort of resources, juice, power to uh, really uh, make viable and like make a, the, that the policy projects wouldn't actually you know, get going and, and do the work that was assigned to them. Um, so uh, we created this process for organizing the policy projects, which would involve first setting up a, um, setting up policy project um, organizing committees, having those people um, find the, the volunteers and um, other resources, and then have the have those organizing committees um, bring back what they what they found to us, um, and then at that point we would make a determination about whether or not to actually start the, the policy project, or whether there was not in fact enough energy to to move forward. And the policy, so the three potential policy projects, the actual focus of the work that we had three three recommendations. The drug control policy project, we call them one. The, the second one we're calling addressing justice system disparate impact on the poor. And the third one, looking at moving and parking violation education. Since a lot of what our police department is giving out are, you know, tickets, uh, violate, you know, moving violations, parking tickets, we thought it actually was worth looking at that. Um, because the whole, the whole cost of the tickets for people. I mean, it really gets right into the disparate impact on the poor. Um, so we thought it was important. It's the main. So anyway, these are. So the, the first one is the drug control policy project is probably going to be the most complicated and difficult, and it's going to take a lot of resource uh, to do. But we all know that the war on drugs has been a central problem for our justice system. And so we felt like we need to try. <laughs> we need to try to focus at that. And actually, council asked us to in, in the establishment of our task force. 
Um, so we're so what we so just looking at that one. I'm kind of skipping around here. Sorry. Um, so it, so the council directed us to research best practices in quote alternative municipal approaches to drug control. This drug control project would research current local drug control practices and policy. It would also instigate drug control best practices in the areas of drug prevention and education, enforcement, and treatment, being careful to report the evidence regarding the effectiveness of different drug control strategies. So that's one work area, that if there is enough resource, we would try it, we would, and, you know, we would go forward. The second one, which is very dear to my heart, is the addressing this disparate impact on poor people of the justice system people losing their licenses because they cannot pay tickets and it's just a downward spiral they cannot get to work they lose their jobs it's just horrible so the village council charged us with the responsibility to find methods of ameliorating the disparate impact of the justice system practices on the poor uh, among other things this policy project would look into how to address the problem of drivers whose licenses have been suspended for non-payment of, of uh, you know tickets so those, so the third one, you know, going to the moving violations and parking violations, this is the place most people have contact with the police. Um, the point of enforcement on our roadways is safety. Um, you know, we feel like, again, you know, there's the financial impacts on people, and we want the focus to be on safety, so there's a lot of different directions that that could go um, in terms of looking at that. So, so well, those are the three areas. How about if we first uh, react to these three project areas? Um, does anybody have questions or concerns about those three areas which are, as you have said, pretty much pointed to in the charge for the committee? My own uh, concern from the last time was how large and complicated a drug control policy project would be. How huge a tough topic that is. And, and the other two seemed a little more doable to me. But no, I, I don't understand the moving parking violation education piece. I really don't. Can you say more about it? Um, well, one thing, for example, um, if you go out to the west end of town, um, it's 35 miles an hour way out and our police our police cars often are sitting down there catching people because you're way in the country and it's still 35 miles an hour so that might be for example a place where we would look at well, this, rooms, I, I, I understand yeah. I'm not explaining where I'm confused I guess very much what are you looking at education there's a sign that says it's 35 what more education what is well, well what, what do you think, what do you see as, yeah, as an outcome? As a, 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 yeah, right. Well, for example, you, you, you didn't quite make a complete stop and then you turn. A police car is behind you, so you do that, the lights come on. Do you get a ticket or do you get educated, <laughs> for example? What is the focus? I mean, that's one kind of example. Um, is our purpose safety when we go a whole mile out of town into the country before it goes to 45 you know or is that something and i know it's a state route and that might be there might be some reason we can't change that but if that's the case if a police officer is down there and someone's going 45 or say they're going 50 and they're way out of town but it's still 35 they're going to get a ticket posted this is my concern. If there are signs and there are traffic, I laws, have been I'm, when I work as a hospice nurse. There are towns where they leave it go 35 a mile and a half into the country. Yeah, it's posted, but there's a sense you're driving along. There's one. There's one. There's one place where it's posted. You didn't see that. You're out in the country. You start speeding up, and they get you a ticket. And basically, it's it's a speed trap. Is what it is. Who is what is yeah. the, the education? The education is the question. Who is yeah. educating who? Right. Well, it, I guess the suggestion was that the police the police officers focus at education at least. But, you know, I see. initially. So first, yeah, analyze right. the data like you guys have done, John, to see where people are getting these kinds of tickets and what it's reasonable to say to the police, look, we get a lot of people that think it's 35 when it's 25, 
don't give so many tickets out and do more education. Yeah, right. that so might be what it when I, when I was looking at this, um, basically, so the, the teacher of my, like, cop class that I was taking at Clark State was like, well, the first line of defense is really education um, for dealing with, with moving violations, um, then enforcement, and then looking at uh, engineering, when basically I was like thinking about, yeah. oh, well, these clearly speech reps. Um, and then uh, Sergeant Knapp mentioned uh, that the, all of the um, sort of car crash, car accident data is publicly available through the um, Ohio Department of Transportation website. Um, so the education there is just the idea that obviously if you can convince people not to commit moving violations, that's better than um, how is this? Punishing people. But the, I'm still puzzled about this. The, can, the education is. Well, you can drop it. We can drop the one. Yeah, yeah. All right, let's do that then. Yeah, because now, now oh, instead of the officers enforcing the law, sure. they're going to be giving classes in what you should have known. <laughs> well, there, there, there's a whole thing about <laughs> also about school. there is a whole thing about um, there is you know a whole roadway safety focus which has to do with engineering. You actually change engineering of those. You you know you add little I don't know what. Those things that give us signage. Yeah, that actually that actually yeah. makes but it safe. The second part is relates to this, which is okay. Are we assuming in the pro we move to the process part of organizing? Yeah, we're assuming that there is someone on the task force who will take a lead. In, and right. so, is there? Yeah, I mean, if, if there's somebody who thinks this is an issue and they want to focus on it, I, I because I don't understand it doesn't mean you shouldn't focus on it. I just don't understand the. Yeah. Right, the so then the question becomes: Is there a person for each of these? Correct. ideas who wants to take the lead in some way. Well, I, I think we're working work. backwards mm -hmm. again. The proposal, my understanding is that this is a proposal to create projects, right? These projects don't exist. No, Pat's right. The, um, basically, we start out by asking, is there anyone on here that wants to work on any of these three? I thought we had to define that we agree on the policy, on the process first before we say now we have these potential projects. You're right. That's yeah. right. That's right. Thank you. Right, we haven't right. even agreed that this is the, this is the policy, this is still a the way we want to make this proposal. Yeah. Yeah, come about. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And right. then we can say, now that we've decided this is how these could come to be, Absolutely. here are possibilities. Yeah. For sure. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Just well, to, to talk about specifics of policies, at some point, didn't we talk about surveillance and privacy issues as also being a, an issue to, to be uh, looking for? We didn't bring that up, but okay. I think Pat was said. Somebody had been talking about cameras, and I wasn't cameras sure. and surveillance. Yeah, reporting. Yeah. So that could be another policy. That's another potential project. It's yeah. a potential project, but uh, it doesn't that I can remember directly connect to the committee charge. See, these are I don't know about the parking. The moving and right? parking is not. That's moving and parking is neither. But the other two have some. They're, they're connected to what was originally a committee charge. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay, so I, and there's no reason why we can't fail on some of those things, but, you know, yeah. fail, so fail or fail. fail. Yeah. <laughs> but, so yeah. are we at the point where we, we want to know, and of course this isn't our whole committee, but we would want to know if there's a person or persons interested in taking the lead on these things. I think, it, yeah, again, I think it's premature because these are pretty big, long, I mean, I agree, the drugs is massive. It doesn't yeah. just cover justice, it covers all kinds of things, and then it starts sucking in a lot of resources and people from all over the place. Uh, I think also that, you know, let's wait till we get some of the other task force things that we're, you know, working on done first, you know, and then start picking some of these massive projects to work on. They're interesting ideas and useful. I think doing these sort of data analysis, you know, that you know, John, you have done with some other things, could, could be really powerful, you know, quick and simple. It could even do something like do an analysis and say, hey, Yellow Springers, this is where people get busted for speeding a lot. Slow down. An article in the right. paper, well, you know. Well, you don't want it just to be about Yellow Springers. You want well, anybody I'm, to drive I'm through. Just, <laughs> I'm, I'm making up an example to fit the, yeah. to fit the okay, circumstances. Uh, Those I, kind of things would be good, but let's right. let's do them later after. So you're feeling that the timing isn't quite right for launching these new projects? 
Well, if there are people who have the time and want to do that. Okay. Yeah, that's true. I, I know Dr. Bellis, Ellis, could we, where we are. Could we, use, could we raise our hand so we could get everybody in? Ellis is raising his hand. He's <laughs> 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 such a good boy. <laughs> I think you called it. Yeah. That's true. That's true. Uh, uh, have we come to the conclusion that it doesn't make sense to refer any of these to existing committees? I mean, maybe that's a terrible idea. <laughs> yeah. what, what ex oh, existing committees. Existing committees, yeah. As a way yeah. of sort of at least getting it on somebody's back burner, or whether it's on somebody's front burner or not. Yeah, so I mean, I well, can tell you the second one goes to Mayor's Court, for instance. But if, for instance, yeah, that, that, would, that would seem like an obvious place for that. Uh, the moving parking might be belonging to the police committee. Surveillance privacy issues that could belong to the police committee, I suppose. Uh, drug control is probably its own thing. Yeah. But I just, I, I don't know if it's a good idea or a bad idea. It's crazy. Well, as you said, it puts it on the back burner, but it would, I think we'd have to revisit it at some point unless we have somebody who's like, oh, I'm going to work on this. This is important to me. Well, well not you know, part it. of the, I don't know, have we decided that, I mean, it, it ha these projects have to have a connector to the, the task force, but, you know, part of the question is, are there some resources out there in the community who want to work on this? I mean, are there some people yeah. who have expert, whether they either have expertise or they just really have a burning passion, they want to, they want to try to make something happen there. Um, and they're going to try to get some other people and they're going to try to work on it and do the re some research and, you know, um, and bring some ideas back. So that's, so that, so that would mean if we wanted to go that route, that um, rather than a committee putting it on the back burner, the committee could put, you know, make it a public call for, you know, to see what other resources are out there. Part of this is the expanding of the number of, I'm sorry. I raised my hand like I was going. Go ahead. <laughs> that's, I mean, that, that's, if we're just about this proposal, if there's someone on the task force who thinks this is a thing that needs work on, then they mm -hmm. can start talking to the community and look for those people who might be interested. And then, I mean, it's gonna, if it's going to happen, it's going to happen. But I think that's, wasn't that what the whole point was to approve this mm -hmm. process? Yeah. Seems I have some hesitation about that process because, again, if this is a charge to the committee, I don't think we could just throw it out there and say, so if anybody wants to work on this, go work on it. I mean, I think we have some level of oversight or responsibility. I don't think we can just say, I don't disagree with that, actually. So, Wait, I don't okay, know if you guys that's, disagree. That's, I don't think that's what this, I didn't think that's what this said. No, that's what Judith was just saying, or something along those lines. Or that's what I heard. No, I think it's what you said it sounds basically like what we're saying, which is, that, yeah. Yeah, well, first we'll determine whether anyone in this group is willing to work to organize. Someone who says, I, I am passionate about the, um, the agent. Right. I am going to look in a community to find those stakeholders who may be, and if I find that there is a core group of people interested, I will come back and say, let's do this. Okay. That's all this says, right? Yeah, yeah that's it. Okay, I, well, I guess I would, I would like to um, do the ADIP one. Sorry? I would like to take the lead on the ADIP. On which one? The second one. <laughs> second. ADIP. Okay. She calls it ADIP. I don't want to call it ADIP. Is there something else it's called? No, no that's, that's, that's an acronym. Does it have an impact on the tour? It's, it's too long I, to, I do acronyms. Yeah, it's I'm too long to say that yeah. entire name, so that's why I acronym that I say. Okay, do so, we need so to, the disparate impact of the port, looking at those in, those impacts, and yeah. I mean it's going to be related potentially to the mayor's court and oh, all like that a lot of driver's license suspension. Yeah, yeah. Yes. I mean I can see it being connected with things, but it's yes. it's a separate issue it, than what we're yeah. currently. Someone yeah. want to make a motion of that? Accept the the process. We accept the process. Yeah. So we recommended. Uh, yeah, second. <laughs> All those in favor? Yeah, Dale? Aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Aye. Okay, so we accept this and... Wait, 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 I was, wait, 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 trying, I was not voting, I was trying to... You're trying to stop it. I was trying to make it mo uh, an amendment. So oh, okay, move to move. 
Number two says if there are at least two people interested in organizing this project. I don't know that we're that to the point we need two. Right now we have one who's going to look into it. Okay. So should we? So rather than two, it should be one. All right. Who is going to do the yeah, initial the second person? <laughs> yeah. I second your amendment. That's all I was. That's all I was going for. Absolutely. Does everyone agree with the amendment? Yes. Okay. Good. All right. All right. And then on the what was, I didn't get the amendment. This is what we will accept here, where it says two, right. I mean one. Okay. We get one to get it started, okay. and they come okay. back and say we have stakeholders, right. then we'll okay. go forward. Is that enough? Yeah. That's enough. Okay. All right, moving along. Um, oh, no, wait. And then, so are the other ones, uh, is anyone willing to work on any of the others? Not yet. Not this group. No. Okay, yeah. cool. Yeah. Can we add the surveillance and privacy issues as an issue? Yeah. And if so, I will say I want to work on it. I won't promise that I actually do. Yeah. <laughs> oh, so it's more of a scheduling thing. But, trashing uh, the signs. Uh, Pardon me? Put a camera on and some lasers on the people trashing the signs. Mm -hmm. And nobody can find the street I live on now. It's all blacked out. Okay, Perfect. the next thing on the agenda, and I'm passing out of the paper in case you didn't uh, read the email, um, which is that, and this is something I've already talked to both Bill Randolph and Janet Mueller about, and um, then I think John reminded me that I hadn't really done much of the process that we had agreed on about how going forward with things. So um, I'm circling back around, even though we've already started, oh, to make sure that people support it or that you want to bring up any issues about this. Basically, my assumption is that our group, the Justice System Task Force, um, will be um, in business for one more year officially, and then we come to some kind of ending or some kind of revisiting or something. And my own feeling is that it would be good to uh, create a permanent, I mean, task force is by its nature temporary, that it would be a good idea to have a permanent uh, piece of legislation that establishes an advisory board um, so that we would be strengthened by having this permanent infrastructure to act as more or less doing what we're doing right now. My second point is I would like to see this future group that I'm imagining be more representative because I think our group is first of all old, <sighs> excuse me, but we are old. Look at us, we are old. We don't have good complete representation of the community. <laughs> we don't have any enough young people, we don't have a young family, we don't have a business person. I mean, we, I just feel like it's not a fully community representative. So what I would do, what I've already started to do, is look at um, these boards are widespread. I mean, any community of size has them. And we've already talked to um, the chief of police in Dayton now because they have, they've had one for two years now. So the work is really to look at these other boards, visit them and find out, well, I guess before that, setting up criteria, what would be an effective board, and then visit and find out, are these boards working, and how do they work? And the big difference between the different boards is some of them are actually, um, what do you call it when you're looking at actual uh, violations of the police behavior? Or ethics affairs. Or ethics or... Internal affairs. Yeah, they're more, they're more like, so a citizen can this board, person, yeah. they're more like review boards. Right. And I'm imagining this board to be more like us, that we're looking at issues in the community, and, and they almost all are assigned to do um, strategic planning with the police every year, to work with the police to do strategic planning, and then also to be in touch with community issues. So that's the idea. Okay, my only comment would be listing the examples of possible selected cities. I'm sorry, can you speak a little examples of possible selected cities and villages? I really would if you I mean this is this is makes sense, yeah, overall. I would hope that you're looking at communities that are closer to your friend size. Because I think Dayton's pot board would be very different than yeah, Dayton is gonna be very there. different, but Great Falls, Sherwood, Oxford, Ohio. Great Falls even. is sorry, Great Falls is Montana thought bigger. I, thought, I know, I thought considerably bigger. Well, no, I, I could be wrong, it's been a long time. No, I think you're right, having some comparable size cities. But I, I just, that's, that's one thing. And to your comment about the makeup of the committee, when you ask for citizen volunteers, you're kind of stuck with who volunteers. That's right. 
And I know that that's always an issue. And it, it came up when I interviewed for this visit, when I interviewed for my seat here, is if all you're hoping, the committee was hoping to have diversity and all this. But if you don't have people from, of different age groups, yeah. or from, you know, people of color, or from businesses, or from whatever, who volunteer, how do you then have a diverse well, board? Well, that will be an issue as we go along and get closer to that idea of that company. Yeah. But the idea of it, of coming in a year or a year and a half, coming to the council and saying, we want this legislation to. Mm -hmm. I think it makes sense. I thought there was one, quite honestly. I think I said that last time we talked about this. I think it makes sense. Uh, Judith? You know, uh, I would like to see a permanent justice system commission rather than this kind of uh, proposal. And the reason is, is because the, the thing that happens when you are an advisory board to the chief of police that meets privately with him is that the problem that I think often happens, well first of all, you're going to probably have people who will not be willing to be a part of that. You want this, you know, more diverse, younger, yeah. blah, blah, blah. They may not want to do that. It's very hooked into the police department at this point, let's be frank. Um, and the other thing is the, the strength of our committee, and you know, it took us a while to get on our feet, and I actually feel like we're functioning pretty well now. I don't know how people are feeling, and I feel like we've kind of gelled, and it just takes a while, and it took us a while. But um, the, our greatest strength is that when we make recommendations, there is a public process. And, the, and so there is a public discourse, there is a public debate, and it's with our elected officials. And they, um, and I think that gives us a, and we, and then the public is engaged in that. It's not a private meeting with a police chief, well, which yeah, I think no, is. This doesn't have to be a private meeting. Well, it will be. Yeah, I didn't no, see it that way. I didn't see that that way, and I don't see it that way at all. I don't even you're, I, making I your you're making recommendations. You're making recommendations. You have no real power quite honestly. Uh, it's just like, um, that's what I think. That is my opinion. Mm -hmm. I, I love, well, since I've been on council, I've been really aware of how these things work. When things go to staff, they usually are happening during, you know, a private meeting. I'm not saying, you know, it's not a public meeting that you're having these conversations. It's a private meeting. And then the chief decides, and, you know, I like Brian very much. He's a great, you know, I, I'm very glad he's our chief. It's not about that, but um, he's not always going to be the chief. Well, he's not. He's not always going to be the chief, but you know he's going to decide what to do with that. And that one you just described is actually what's happened all this year. That is exactly what's happened. It sounds like you have some concerns about uh, public versus uh, not public, and um, a couple of the things that just went right out of my head, which fit in with this whether it's an advisory board or a task force or a commission, I don't think matters that those, the public versus not public, you know, is an important aspect of it. If you're always on the board with the chief and your buddies with the chief, you're going to make a different kind of decision than if you're separate from that. I'm hearing you say. Well, it's, 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 those are, those are valid. Concerns. Well, I'm, yeah, and also, I'm not saying, I don't want to start at the front end saying it will be this. The idea is to research, interview, explore, bring things back, talk about it, decide what kind of decide what something more I would I would like I mean I like the idea of doing research, but I would look, like to for you to look beyond advisory boards for you know, police advisory board where you're just talking to the police department. Um, I'd like there must be other kind the, of these yeah. kind of boards. So when the federal government comes in and like threatens to sue a department and then comes to a consent group and as they did in Cleveland. Like they, they set up the Cleveland Police Commission, which actually, honestly, their charge is relatively similar to ours, except for that it was written, obviously, by the Civil Rights, um, um, Civil Rights Division lawyers. Yeah. So it's a lot more specific. Like you will look at use of force, you will look at this, you will look at that, and you will make recommendations to the city council and the, and the police chief. Um, and those recommendations will be posted online, and the city council will respond to them, and their response will be posted online. Like, but like it's relative. But honestly, that's not that different from what we're doing, except for that their chair gets paid a hundred thousand dollars a year. <laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> and they're not. I don't, I don't think that there's so much of a volunteer committee as a paid, yeah. paid commission. Would it help to change it from advisory to review? 
Is that? No, review tends review to mean disciplinary. disciplinary. Like, in other words, a police a police mm -hmm. person has done something no. wrong. So, review in the you know that's I jargon. Know. Plan. That's another word. Yeah. Yeah. You know, doing research on what should come next, I think, is important. You know, I have pushed really strongly that the elected officials and the public oversees their police department. We don't just ask the chief to make all the decisions. You know that there's that there is a that there is a you know the civil society oversees the police departments and the elected officials do, and that they can make policies about it because that's kind of a very new concept in this in this country. That the you know it's always been you know they know best and they just do whatever they do. Uh, and we're no, now that we want this kind of reform to happen, it's going to take a lot of public involvement. And so I just, so that's my only thing, you know, to do research I think is great, but I would yeah. like to broaden what you're looking at. Well, I mean, it brings me back to the question of what is our public involvement? I mean, do, giving, a, giving a recommendation to council is pretty puny public involvement. I mean, we have at our charge that we'll do more public education and public involvement, and I think that's an unfinished you know, business of this committee, and partly because we don't have enough time and energy and whatever to keep doing that, but, huh. which reminds me, I wanted to put our annual report in the library, a big deal, but, you know, something. Yes, I think <laughs> Something. I mean, I think we need to keep doing that publicly. John? Uh, and then, I guess, um, just, it seems like also one of the possibilities of the results of your research might just be um, learning from other groups and then restructuring. Like ultimately these two ideas might end up converging where you're like, hey, I've learned this from other groups. And then yeah. council's like, actually we agree that it should just be a permanent um, justice commission and then ideas from your, from your groups and then, yeah. It seems to me that there's a structure Coming off of what you're saying, John, there's a, you know, some, some good ideas about things to consider and a suggested structure for coming up with the you know, community-based permanent infrastructure. I think that that's vague enough yeah. and specific enough to say what I'm hearing you present. Maybe that's right. you know, and so whatever it's called, you know, whoever's on it, you know, all of those things are are, are details again, you know, downstream. But is there going to be some permanent Permanent group is that a good idea? And I, I think even though I think at some point you have got to balance, you've got to always be balancing the the uh, advisory and the oversight, and just let people do their damn jobs. Uh, it makes sense in this day and age to have, and in this community, to have a group like that, whatever it's called. So I support the idea of investigating and putting something in place, but that's as specific, but specific as I would want to get. Okay. What happened to the advisory board when the good old days for Chief McKee? Anybody, anybody know? Advisory board for what? When we had Chief McKee. Oh, I have no idea. Everything was gold and wonderful, so that advisory board <laughs> must have been in place. I'll look, I'll look into that. Yeah, so. <laughs> okay, is there anyone in opposition? Is there anybody who knows you here in work? <laughs> Actually, doesn't this, follow, doesn't this follow into the proposal that we just approved, that we have this interest and Pat's going to do some work yeah. on it and come back to it? Sure. Did you sign up to do this, Betty? Yes. 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 There you go. Is anybody opposed to doing work? I just <laughs> <laughs> go for it. Her name is first on the list. <laughs> go for She's it. got two helpers already. I do. I have two people willing to do it. Ooh. Mostly two interested people. in that. Yeah, I trust. I think it's a good idea. <laughs> okay, moving on to uh, John and uh, All right. daily report. And the entree. We have a PowerPoint. Okay. Yeah, where's it going to be good? Uh, probably everywhere. Uh, <laughs> At a theater near you. <laughs> yeah, near like, you. Do I see lilacs? Above more. Uh, no, but she can see it over. Yeah. I'm just going to see it. John, it's back here. Well, yeah, but so I, put a, I just want to put it everywhere. Well, unless, right well, I guess no one will see that one, so just these two then, I guess. All right. So, 37 minutes. This should be, should be quick. All right. Yeah. Uh, so this is the report on the demographics of uh, Yellow, Yellow Springs residents that receive citations and warnings um, between April 2010 and December 2016. Um, were all of you, no, you weren't. 
Okay, so we looked at um, misdemeanor, minor misdemeanor citations, misdemeanor, minor misdemeanor written warnings um, that were received by Dale Springs residents. We didn't look at oral warnings, parking tickets, expunged records, or anything felony related. Obviously, this is all police department stuff, so nothing from the courts or prosecutors. There's no information about that in here. And um, we're going to be looking at the tickets received by out of towners um, very soon. That should probably be done by the end of December. So tickets means traffic tickets, right? Tickets mean um, anything that's a misdemeanor or minor misdemeanor. It's so a citation. Up to up to yeah, misdemeanor. Misdemeanor and, and, yeah, citation. Mis yeah, citation and Cit warning. Mi misdemeanor and minor misdemeanor citation. Yeah, and written warnings, exactly. Yeah. yeah. All right, so. I'm sorry, yeah, okay. Are traffic stops in here? Traffic's are in here, yeah. Okay. Yeah, traffic and criminal. Yes. One more question. Where did you get your raw data from the police department? From the department, yeah. Okay. And yeah, I mean, if you want the no, that's okay. Go ahead. data set, I can share with you too. Um, so, the citations by race. Um, so, the, this is, uh, we compared what was in the data to um, the Census Bureau estimates um, from 2011 to 2015. So that includes pretty much almost all of the time period that we're looking at here. Um, so 9.4% of the 3,027 white people that live in Yellow Springs received at least one citation, um, while 13.2%, which is uh, 65 people, uh, of the uh, 491 black people uh, received at least one citation. Um, so um, the consultant calculated, and these numbers, by the way, you can't just like divide 13.2 by 9.4 and get 1.47. Um, there's some degree of weighting and controlling because there's age and gender data in there also that he's doing. Um, so this is the more actually statistically valid number, is the 1.47 here. Um, black, he found that uh, black residents are 1.47 times more likely to receive at least one citation than white residents. And he found the likelihood that this difference here is just due to chance to be um, less than 1%, to specifically 0.96%. That's what these p, -val p values mean. And yes, any questions? That's the most important part. So we'll start there. Okay. I have a question, John. Yes? All of their races, they're not white, right? All of the races is everyone that's not white or black. Yeah, um, so that's I, I Asian, a, Native American, and mixed race, and yeah. um, other race, including mixed race. If the other category analysis, is this is yeah. the police are racist bastards, then you should include all of them together. Uh, include POC with, just have a, have yes, a POC you know, Are you category? white or not white? It should be the analysis. Um, we did consider that. So that drops the number to 11.5%. Still higher, but it's not the same. Uh, no, it wouldn't drop it like that because the number of all... If I use the numbers you provided, it does. But oh, it does? You just added up 159 and 491. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, so one thing to take into consideration here is that the number of mixed race um, people in the data is... If, if you look at the reports in your packet, and if you look at them, um, well, keep going. I just wanted to throw that out. Yeah, see that so there's, there's a particular, the reason why misleading. that that's the case is basically pretty easily determinable. If you look at page two of your report. Which report are you talking about? The right state one? Yeah, the right state one. Mm -hmm. Oh, no, so I'm sorry, not page two, that's more nice. I'm sorry. Citations. Uh, so this would be actually page two of Crandall No, no, no. This is page page two where the page number is oh. at the bottom of the page. Okay. So it's warnings in the middle. Um, it's actually page ten. Oh, that page ten. Of the right state. Of the right state one, yeah. Um, so you'll see that uh, this one. that basically. If you look at the American Indian and Asian citations, um, they're pretty much in line with, if you combine them together, with um, their proportion of the population. What's really throwing it off is that uh, they only marked six, six Yellow Springers that they cited as other, um, which includes multiracial. 
um, which would be 1.67% of the people that were cited. Um, but there's 3.2% of mixed race people in the village. So I, I would say that most likely more mixed race people were in fact cited. Um, I guess the question of interpretation here is, were those people marked as unknown race, which is 41 people, or were they marked as black? And so depending on how you want to interpret that, um, you would read the data slightly differently. Um, either that or, or, mixed or, or, white. or either that or mixed race people just are cited way less than any other group. <laughs> or, the, or they were marked as white. That's also possible. Exactly. So yeah. I would say So the, the officers mark uh, the race of the people with this level of specificity? Yes. This these are the categories uh -huh. from the from the data that I got from the department itself. This is on the ticket. Yeah, this is on the ticket. Mm -hmm. um, if you so look this, at the, this is based on the officer's perception, not on yeah. the person self-reporting. Cor correct. It has a whole bunch of check the boxes, right? You know. Exactly. The off the officers choose in a box. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Right. Yeah, when I look at the findings, I only see two findings here. One is that one and a half times, you know, they're white people. That's that are, the that are, uh, and, and the other is that on some thing that I'm not quite understanding, it's the same. So in the end, what we want to find out is that the police targeting somebody, some subgroup of the population, and what this is saying is that it's black people. That's just that is our conclusion, yes. Yeah, well, and I'm saying it's not quite that bad, or maybe not even that bad, because of the, because of the, I don't know if I want to put it down because I can't tell, and you add all the non-white people together, so I don't think this is just quite that conclusive, but go on. Okay. I have other data to support my conclusions. So, the um, average citations per person among um, wise residents um, that received at least one citation, uh, did not differ at a statistically significant level by race. Um, with the data that he analyzed, he, he um, estimated that, the 70, that there was a 79% chance that the difference um, was just due to chance. Um, that's possibly actually higher, um, because after the data was analyzed, um, Average number of citations? Is that what we're talking about? Yeah, I'm sorry. So looking at the pool, yeah, looking, at, this, uh, looking at the pool of people that received at least one citation, you know, you've got your you've got your black people that received one citation, you've got your white people that received at least one citation. But those people often received more than one. Right. Um, and so we were comparing the average number that the that the group as a whole okay. received. Okay. So you're the, the average group yeah, should differ significantly by race. Correct. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. The getting of citations, it took me a while to understand this. Does everybody understand it? No. Okay. So the, the, yeah, it took me a while. The, the first, that first, going to, go back to the... This, this the appear, third, appears the one to one contradict person. the first one. No, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. It's a that's, how that's, how I read. that's exactly how I'm reading it. Yeah. yeah. So go back, John, yes. to the earlier one. The way John explained this to me, which I finally understood it was, this is comparing uh, this is comparing against our census data. Of what year? What year census? Um, the 2011 to 2015. Yeah. Estimate. So this is compared against the the data of the number of people who live in Yellow Springs, white people, black people, etc. Okay. That the next one is okay. Now they are just looking at the people who have already received a citation. Is by race, and they're and they're often getting more than one citation. And are black people or white people or you know right. other races getting more extra citations? So now you're just looking at the group who have gotten citations. You're not looking at the general population. You're just looking at the group who have gotten citations. Is there a difference by race in the number of citations within that group that people are getting? Because I didn't realize well, this. You, you, you get stopped and I, I, you I, get I, two I tickets. Get, and I, I was I get not four getting tickets. it from that. that yeah. Okay, but now are you understanding it now? I need to so, see it again. Okay. This? this? So go to this, the yellow one or whatever color it was. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, for some reason, my display setting seemed to have changed. Is that table 24 you're talking about? Yeah. The number of citations by race? Probably. Do not extend That's these the displays. That's what the tech refers to. Duplicate these displays, thank you. Uh, 
Is it up? Okay, there you go. Can you change this? There you go. Okay, great. Can't raise that any higher. Okay, that's fine. All right. Sorry, I could maybe make this bigger. If I so this that. is like, so this is, now you're thinking about people who just have gotten citations. Was, and, and they get more than one many times. What did you say the average number of people get who get citations? Um, it's a, just under two. So overall. if you average all the citations that are given, and an average, people get two. They don't just get one, they get two. And that's the same across all race groups. It's not different. So we're not yeah. looking now against our census. Right. It's, it's slightly higher for black people, but at, as I said, the likelihood that it's due to chance is pretty yeah. overwhelming. Can was, we go back was age included in that calculation too? Because yeah, yeah, we'll go over the age. I expect the sex. You know, so can, can we go back to the prior? My brother did a lot of stupid things for many years. Okay, so this one. So I'm. Well, yeah, I mean, one conclusion was that. So here's a question, just about the way you display the information. <laughs> what percentage of people that get tickets are white, and what percentage of people that get tickets are black? Um, so that should be on table. Isn't that, so that's what this is showing. Um, no, this no is wait, it's table. Table. Okay, so the percentage of, of people that get tickets that are white um, are, if you exclude the people that are that are of unknown race, mm -hmm. um, at 79.17. Okay. And the percentage of white people that live in the village, according to the Census Bureau, is 82.2. All right, and then the percentage of people that get tickets that are black is what percentage? 18.06, and the percentage of people in the village that are black, according to the Census Bureau, is 13.5. Okay. For some reason, those numbers mean more to me than these numbers, yeah. but no, I don't know, know what you it's mean. just sort of like a, yeah. maybe a... Yeah, the whole I don't know if it, is that considered more probative or less probative than this this way of doing the numbers? Uh, this is what the consultant said, so I can totally do my I could have done my PowerPoint based on this instead. I apologize, <laughs> but um, it is in your back. Well, I mean, it's I, good I, for us to talk about it because we are going to want to share this report publicly. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm saying saying even sharing this publicly would be a terrible mistake. I mean, well, yeah, that's a separate, separate question, we'll separate question that if we may, yeah, it would be good to, yeah. to yeah. Yeah. I mean, just, just, just the, bad stuff. the way I commonly yeah. like, think about yeah. it, I think, well, so what percentage of the people are right. in the village are African American? What percentage of the people that get tickets are African American? If I see a disparity there, then I go, hmm. Whereas this is a different number, and it's a more complicated uh, statistical concept. Uh, which I can grasp at 9 in the morning, but not at 9 at night. So would you guys generally recommend that we share table 13 instead of... I don't think we any don't of this share share any of this. No, no, no. no. Would you keep it secret from no. the public? No, 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 no. No, no, no. no, 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 no. At this point is what not at this point, no. Okay. No, wait, we can ask that I'm sorry. Do, would you guys generally agree that it's more we understand, to, that this table is more understandable? We need, to have, better, we need to have a chart. better understanding of what the data I mean. Right. <laughs> I agree. All right, great. And I don't know the second chart. I apologize. This is hard to understand. Maybe it, maybe it just it needs to be said differently. It took me about a half hour this afternoon to try to say you, you understand this. Yeah, no, I don't. I apologize. So, what else? You don't need to apologize. You've got a lot of work. But, um, great. But, uh, this, I think something else has to happen with it. John, what are, yeah, that's yeah. this information. What are, the, what are the gross numbers here? What are we talking about? How many tickets do we have? All right. So, that's table 24, page 15. I've got the, all the citations on there, by the way. Go yeah. Um, so, this one? Yeah. So, um, so this is excluding the people whose race is unknown, uh, who, for various reasons, um, their average number of tickets that they receive is lower than everyone else, mm -hmm. um, and would drag the overall um, under two. Um, but for white people, it's 2.16 on average. Um, for black people, it's 2.32 on average. And for all other races, it's 2.5. I'm talking about the gross number of people that were stopped and got tickets. Not how many tickets. Yeah, not only tickets, just the gross number of people that got tickets that's uh, what, that's per first, year that's or some numbers. such thing. I don't know what we're getting at here. Uh, or over this time period. Oh, everyone, what was their average number of tickets? Or no, was the no, how many tickets were written in, in a year? No, how, how many, many people, people were, tickets? How many people got tickets? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Tickets in six and three quarters years? Yeah. I mean, yeah. Well, six and three quarters, no, over yeah, it's, it's many years. 
So I'm looking at about 401 if those numbers add up right. Yeah, I got. I had How many? 401. People. Number of citations. Not number of citations. Sorry. Um. So We're it's 15, right? Um, 1,200. Yeah, one. I'm there now. I was out of here. Yeah. Well, these are numbers. 1,201. 618 people received 1,201 tickets. 618 people. In one year? They've over no. in six and three quarters years. Okay. So about 100 per year. Mm, no, there's no. got to be more than that. No, it's um, divided by. I mean, he's six. just talking residents. He's not talking. In just well, just residents. Just residents. Oh, just residents is. Oh, do you want everyone? Well, I well, mean, we're these, talking, we're these talking residents, residents apply to residents, am I right? So I'm yeah. just trying to understand the pool of people that right. are. Because I've got I mean, the overall numbers right I mean, here. I mean, I mean, if you're per dealing, year, it would be nice to know kind of an average. Yeah, if, if your pool is small, then a small fluctuation causes a big percentage difference. And so that's that's how you get in trouble in, in working with data sets. I, I, I do some of this, but the, not a lot. But that should be incorporated into the P, which is part of the reason why even yeah. when no matter yeah, what yeah, all yeah, others, yeah. no yeah. matter what the statistic is for all others, it's almost never statistically significant because there's so few of them. Okay. Like he's incorporating okay. that into. But the I mean, you understand my point. It's yeah, like yeah, it does matter how big the data set is. And, uh, yeah, yeah, but yeah, but you understand that. Basically, we were able because we were looking yeah, at so many years. statistics is supposed to. Because we were looking at so many years, we are looking at really a pretty large pool. So, John, do you want to share any other findings? And we can we'll be postponing right. to some extent the discussion oh, of what to do with it. But let's at least know what we're talking about. Okay. So, the percent of wise residents that received at least one citation by sex um, is these numbers: thirteen point three for men, eight point six for women. Um, and male residents were 1.63 times more likely to receive at least one citation. Uh, John, are these numbers 237 men over that six-year period mm -hmm. and 164 women over that six-year period? Yes, residents, exactly. Yep. Um, so, I'm sorry. The, the red here is um, because some of this is the uncorrected. Uh, I, you know, I sent you guys that correction. It's really, really barely any different. The green would just pop it up ever so slightly more. Um, Green is what is basically what the corrected mean mean oh, okay. citations would oh, okay. be. That was that thing you sent around is just a seven extra, and that's and you be yeah. able to work. They were the all part. they were all men, so yeah, right exactly. And they were all white. And they were all white exactly. Okay. These are what are we dealing with here? Um, this is the average citations per person. Okay. And so for men, it's two point four one per person. For women, it's one point seven eight. Um, so okay. male residents get tickets more than women. Yeah, There's and get more tickets than women. And young people get, and young more, people get more than people. Exactly. 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 Did, exactly. Did, were, are the correct numbers reflected in that very first chart you showed us? Uh, so the very first chart, um, because the seven white male citations, those people were actually in the data set. These were additional tickets that they'd received that I thought were clerical error duplicates. Um, it doesn't affect this because there are so more stops, but it, just more tickets we, per Right time. when we when we add those people in, there's still 285 white people. Okay. But it does affect this 79 percent in the sense that now the probability is even probably higher that this difference was due to due to chance. Okay. Yeah. That makes sense. Gotcha. Okay. So yeah, the red is all is all, I underlined in red everything that's the his report, but it would maybe be slightly different if the data was corrected. So likewise, here this finding is true, but possibly it could be even higher. Um, obviously very statistically significant, but possibly even more so. Um, less than 1% less than um, chance that it's due to chance. Um, probably that it's due to chance. Um, and then warnings by race and sex. Are you guys interested in the warnings, or should we skip over that, since I know we don't have very much time? Didn't, you, didn't they say somehow that there's no significant difference between anybody and the warnings. Um, so like, that's what I thought the warnings the quickly. Was. I'd like to. All right. See. So there's no significant difference in terms of the proportion of. Uh, you can't show any bias because it would be a warning data. Go ahead, John. Yeah. So there's no oral warnings here. It's just written warnings. No. Um, so there's, uh, in terms of the proportion of wise residents that received at least one warning, 
Um, it doesn't differ significantly by race or by sex. Um, by that you mean the percentage of people that got it is roughly equivalent to the percentage of people in the population. Correct. Okay. Exactly. That's, that's a good way to say it. Yeah. And those are the likelihoods that the difference is due to chance. Of course, black people got more, but there's a 17% chance that it was due to um, chance. Uh, males got more, but there's a 35% ch um, chance that it was probability that it was due to chance. Um, however, the average warnings per person did differ significantly um, between black males and everyone else. Um, black, black males received on average uh, 0.91 more tickets than, than white males, for example, um, and it's about the same for, for the difference between them and uh, white females. Point, say that again. 0.91, so almost a full warning difference. The, I'm sorry, the average number of, of warnings that a black male received um, that was a resident was 2.42 warnings. The mean difference between them and uh, white males, and this is using weighting and controlling um, in the statistically valid way, um, the mean difference is 0.91, almost like nine tenths of a warning. Almost an extra one. Almost an extra one, exactly. Okay. So. And, and I'm sorry to be so picky on here. So mm -hmm. you just said something that made me wonder. These are discrete, st I mean, if, if I get a warning in, uh, in 2014 and I get a warning in 2016, how many times do I show up in your database? Twice. Twice. Okay. Cool. Okay. Committed to crimes, you can show up twice. Yes. So should we take some time to talk about um, what we'll do with this, or do you want to just... Yeah, I mean, I'd rather do that than go over the data, but... <laughs> <laughs> but that's, that's because I want to get it released, and if we don't talk about it, uh, then I might be... But then we'll see what happens. Well, before we start talking about it, can I tell you, I talked with Brian Hausch about this question. Uh -huh. This... Uh, data report, you know, was paid for by the village. And it is now a public document. Mm -hmm. So anybody can request it. And I'm telling you, we need to release it the way we want to release it. We should not hold it back and have somebody else ask for this and do their own interpretation. I think that's a bad idea. I talked with Brian about it. And what we what we talked about Which was Brian, Brian Hausch. Because I, you know, because that it could be released at the, this coming meeting. Doesn't have to be though, right? I mean, we, we still have some time to think through about it. Well, there's no reason, there's no urgency to. to the only urgency that. I see is this is a public document. Yeah, but nobody knows about it. So. Well, yeah. no, that's not. Oh, yes, they do. We told them. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, I don't know that, you know, I don't. It's actually, Brian said he saw the um, summary and he thought it was in the packet. I was like, really? Well, there's we some rule that says we could every every I think everything we, should be released within a particular number of it's minutes. A, it's just a, between the time it's created and the time you have the opportunity. It, it's, no, no, it's a public record. Somebody requests it, they have to give it to them. They have to give it to them. That's different from when when it should be released. Okay. Yes, that's, that's, that's I, don't, I don't think it's a rule it that is, says, oh, you got the document. It is. Right I don't know. I How about we, so. let's let's have a little bit of a go around about okay. any concerns or issues. I mean, well, so what we talked about was. You know how you know given the data right you know how you know how could this be a you know useful how yeah. could it make it a useful thing and not just uh sure. being upset that you know it looks like uh black people are you know getting citations one and a half times as much as white people um and you know we were talking about the fact that you know yellow springs is part of a very racist society, and so it's not too surprising yeah. that, and in fact, uh, John's stepdad said to him, it's a better statistic than most police departments, he thought. So there's that. But the question is, why are we gathering data? Why is data important to gather, and what can be gained by it? And so we were talking about the fact that just a consciousness of this fact is used for our police officers to know in the last six years this is the data this is what and we just need to be very and my only concern about releasing it is that we're really clear about it you know that it's, it's presented in a clear way so people can really understand it 
but if we can get get it um, so but you know we were talking about so because we're going to continue to ask our police department to be gathering data what is the use of it so that's so part of it is um, it raises consciousness of our police officers you know this whole implicit bias thing it kind of it so why not uh, present it to the police department? Why not sit down with all the officers and, and, and so, before taking it out into the public? So the Carlsons had, the, I, I emailed to Carlson the report uh -huh. uh, basically at the same time I sent it to you guys. So okay. He, he should have it. He had it like two weeks ago or something. But yeah, I think a discussion had. with them would be very useful. You know, There's, um, them. I think, I think they're going to need some help to understand. Well, I think, yeah, trying to get it clearer. To me, that's the biggest, my only concern about releasing it. The actual, I mean, if you remember the last time Steve McQueen wants this released for a very good reason, you know, uh, as a black person. Um, so for us, and so sort of why wouldn't we release it as long as we're really clear and we understand what's the purpose of data collection? And we're going to be using it that way. It's not about you know, screaming at the police, you're terrible the racist. Is uh, unlike the rest of us who are not racist at all, you know, <laughs> I mean, it's like, yeah, it's like, it does, so, you know, Brian and I were talking about how we would try to manage it in, at the council meeting, and what's the positive purpose of data collection, what can we learn from this, how it helps police departments to make, you know, to improve what they're doing, and that sort of thing, that's what we were talking about. John, do you have a question? When I talked to Beth, she was, didn't seem as confident as you that some of these conclusions, I mean, I know she helped you write it up, but have you talked to her about that? Oh, really? Yeah, no, she stated that those, that those p-values are extremely significant. Um, uh -huh. I mean, they're below 1% for most of them, so. Uh -huh. And in terms of the difference for warnings between black males and white males, it's less than 0.01% chance that that's, or probability that it's due to just random chance. Oh, okay. So yeah, no, she did, she felt like this was, that these, she was like, anyone that's, that's uh, familiar with statistics, um, these p-values are extremely significant. Okay. Well, I mean, most people are not extremely familiar with exactly. statistics. So yeah. Yeah. I think yeah. that's part of that's the, the why the report the, coming forward has to have a pretty clear conclusion and a pretty clear uh, introduction about yeah. this is over a what, six year period, a six year period. Yeah. It's not a current, it's not since January. And you know, I mean, you need to have some discussion about it. Uh, I agree that the importance of it is we need, that's part of the transparency so issue, I, so the, the question, data is available to people. So my proposal is basically uh, just about like, would you guys put your name to the summary that's in here, which is really towards the front. It's um, it's the it's the John Hentling and Beth Randall, right? right. One, two, and it's uh, three pages long. Page two, the findings. Yeah, page two is findings. Page one's overview. Page two is. I mean, sorry. Page one is. The overview of the analysis, page two is the findings, page this is the and, and part of page three, and then the conclusions on page three. I think that what you're saying, Pat, is, you know, is, is very key to this. Timing is key, but the, the, um, it's not clear to me what the findings are. Uh, the data analysis is subjective, I believe. It's a good guide to behavior you know, modification for the police department to be just, you know, you write it down, you're going to change your behavior. Um, the data seems to me to be incomplete. You had to do some data cleaning, you said. Uh, people, you know, over this, haven't been, weren't taking the same data the same way over the six year period. They were. They were? Okay, I, I, I misunderstood that. I, they were doing it differently. They could do a different job, I say better, a different job, you know, put more data in. Uh, I think the best that this is useful for, the, the thing this is most useful for is figuring out how to, you know, how to take new data uh, to, you know, and using it to monitor. This is not clear. And if you're going to present this to the public, it should be half a page to one page. This is way too much. You know, don't say, you know, P analysis and bottling curves and, you know, and bathtub curves and stuff like that. That's just too complex. Again, I'm a smart boy. I understand math. This is, I'm not, I'm not following this. Yeah, this is, 
the way the general he's talking about the analysis summary. The analysis summary is too complicated. He's still doing it. Oh, yeah. This is just way too much. John, I have a question. Absolutely. Um, because the only, let me, let me see the only thing anybody's going to, most people are going to take of this, I bet, is the odds of receiving at least one citation for a black Yellow Springs resident are about one and a half that of a Yellow Springs for white Yellow Springs resident. Everything That's else all is gonna, we're going to see. The everything else is going to be, by God, here's proof. The analysis oh, well, conducted for this report. Oh, that's clearly the most important finding. Yeah, but it's, it's actually even, yeah. okay. I don't think so. The analysis conducted for, for this report are exploratory and findings are open to differing interpretation and explanations. However, the fact that black male residents of Yellow Springs receive significantly more warnings than other groups and black residents of both genders receive at least one citation at, sig at significantly higher proportional rates than other groups requires attention to JSTF, the YSPD, and the Yellow Springs community. I think it's pretty, I don't know how else to say it. I, don't, it sounds like, if you believe in data collection, I am not a data person at all. I'm not that keen about it. But if it's evidently supposed to tell you something meaningful, and this tells us something, and I don't think yeah. it's... I don't, don't, worry I about, it's don't worry about people digesting the documents themselves. I mean, I imagine the Yale Springs News would write up an article about it, so they'll let the journalists digest it, that's their jobs. John, how do you know you got all the citations and warnings, including ones that went to Xenia? Um, because the YSPD told me that they gave me everything, <laughs> and I assumed that they weren't lying. Um, they, they were citing under both the municipal statutes and the state statutes, if that's any consolation. No, I don't think, I think it would be one or the other. Um, so, so you so physically saw all the tickets on the computer screen, like, on the, and you could you tell which that it which were being sent where? Mm -hmm. No, I can't I can't tell which one are, which are being sent where. Um, but they supposedly they keep track you got of, them all. Yeah, they they stated that this is how they keep track of. I, that's what I requested, and they stated that this is how they keep track of all the written warnings and citations is through um, the New Worlds. Um, something system, your world systems. Okay, and then they must have gotten sorted out somewhere else because, like, this is all the cases that went to Xenia in 2016. And how many of that? I'm looking through it now. <laughs> they they wouldn't give it to you in data. I paid. I had to pay 60 bucks to get this from Xenia <laughs> Municipal Court. Yeah. But but what I'm saying is you maybe had all that data and then later it got sorted out like so these went to Xenia and you may have seen everything I'm just asking a question how many right. is on each oh page? no I do know that some were sent to Xenia because that's actually how I figured out um, that the duplicates I, yeah you this, mentioned that in your yeah practice. that the seven duplicates I eliminated um, the reason that I found out that they the department had told me that each ticket should have a different ticket number and uh, basically um, right uh, week or two ago, um, I was looking at the data and uh, was like, wait, I wonder if I can actually find a record of these um, through the court's website to determine whether there was multiple counts here or whether it was just one count, and indeed there were multiple counts. So, so mean, it definitely includes the municipal. Well. I certainly don't feel shocked by the no, findings. I mean, they, it's somewhat predictable. It's just how is it communicated both to the public and the, and you know, there were, if you're talking about six years ago, there were several officers who are no longer with us who may have been more prone. That's my <laughs> point. So I, I'm That's just concerned about the, about some accusation about our There were two officers. black officers who were on our department not so many years ago. Yeah. So probably within the last six years who are no longer on the Right. This, this is my biggest concern is that we're going to put these numbers out there when the interpretation is going to be what it happens when anything goes out. Mm -hmm. I mean, you've got you've got a tremendous amount of data searching and yeah. compiling here. This is you know, I think it's a it's a good start. Yeah. I think there's more that we need, specifically which officers, because if we well, find I out that the majority of these tickets were written by these officers, that's not the guess. Well, I, I, I'm just asking because we, we don't, I don't know. That's, that's why I'm asking. That kind of that's a question. Be part of it. But that's, because, so that's because, a question. Let me, let me finish. Let me finish, please. Please. And I'll no, shut up. I no, promise. No, because what this does is it paints a black mark for one, 
no pun intended, over the entire department. Mm -hmm. When in fact it's very likely that it was a certain set of officers, whether it was two or three, whether it was five years ago, whatever. We don't know that at this point. Okay. Okay. Um, I could be completely wrong. I, I don't know. That's the problem. Right. And I think that by releasing information that is is incomplete, that is open to so many interpretations, and that the public is going to jump to the worst because that's what the public does, we are unfairly hampering the or labeling the entire department as suspect. Now. Because people aren't going to look at this was six years ago. This was over this period. This was when these officers who were no longer here, whatever. I think we need to be very careful with how this is released. And I don't think it's ready to be released because it's incomplete. It, okay. I mean, the most recent data is less than three year old. Um, but you see what I mean about the officer breakdown and the. Well, I mean, and the that, that's that, that's that a, I don't think we should be doing. Yeah, I don't yeah. think we can do that to the public. I mean, we, we not do that, no. Technically, it's. I think it's, it's a good example of that more, more information that is needed to do better data analysis. But it's it not makes the analysis because one doesn't need to look at the officer level. It's not really, in fact you wouldn't look at the officer level until you determined that there was something to look for. Well and I wonder but uh, I you wouldn't wonder about the number of people it. getting a whole bunch of tickets. Why are the why are you know sixty year old black men getting more tickets than um, twenty five year old black men or uh, 35 year old black man, rather. You know, that's really these spikes and these. Uh... Well, I'll just say, I work for a hospice in Springfield, Ohio. It is a racist organization. I would tell anybody that. I can guarantee you that's true. And it's all white people that work for it. I mean, is that, is, you know, I managed to get them to hire an admit, a, a you know, nursing manager who was African American. She started hiring black people. There are black people to be served in Springfield. And if somebody said to us, you're a racist organization, I would totally agree and I would not take it personally. It is, a, is just, it's just true. What can I say? And we live in a racist society and I don't know that. Well, but there I isn't, I think there is, I agree with you totally. And there is an issue when we start talking about the police being racist because the consequences of the police being racist are so much more serious than, than, than health care. I don't know. Yeah, I, mean, yeah, I mean, I serious there too. Yeah, so there's yeah. it's not about being yeah. sent to prison or whatever. You no, know. no one that I've talked to about this has been surprised by the result. So, no, it'll essentially be like, oh, finally. Yeah, I'm so not surprised, surprised, despite everything I've said. It isn't so it, 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 yeah, it, it, this one, if this were accurate, I wouldn't be surprised. I, you know, I, yeah. I'm still one of them. Al, do you want to jump in here? Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm basically going to say, well, that repeat what I said last week. I'm, I think, or the last, last month, I think it was, I think it's, I like data, and I like data analysis, and I think it's, it, it's a good effort. I think it's way too complicated and too long to, to present. Uh, but I think the, the impact was, was missed by doing this kind of analysis. I don't know that the police department is going to, what are they going to, how are they going to react to this? How is it going to improve? But I suggest the last time, it would have been better to not identify the officers by name, but have a blind, but to take the officers and, and the number of citations they gave, the number of the blacks, and then you present, present that to the police department. Then they will, they, the, the chief and the officers will know what the norm is. Uh, oh, you know, I, I think I've been given too many tickets. They won't know who they are in that yeah. list, but they'll see. I'm given too many tickets. So I, I'm afraid I am, you know, I am um, using implicit bias. The chief can will see that there's someone that's way out of line, and he won't know who it is, but he can, he can I think it could have a very profound impact. Uh, on the uh, medical school admissions committee, we we vote, and it's all done by secret ballot. But they give us the results of the ba of the ballots for each candidate and each voter. No one, I mean, I usually can figure out who I am, but you can you you, you can adjust your vote if you're out of 
line with the with me, uh, and and it can, that can have an impact on them. So, so what I hear a lot of you saying is that this data analysis doesn't give enough weight to the a few bad apples argument about police departments. But isn't that argument like pretty widely discredited? I mean, like, and honestly, I've looked at the data, and I'm not a statistician, so I didn't re run statistically valid tests. But it's people's aren't really that significantly different. Mm -hmm. I don't. I don't. I, I, don't, think it's, I don't think it's yeah, necessarily saying that. I, I yeah. think that you know there there are other there are subtleties to the there are different ways of putting this information together, and I don't have a complete understanding of how this was put together and what was used. So. I'm not comfortable with you know with the interpretation because of that. You know, I, these spikes are really weird to me. Um, I think that that's the average number. Yeah, I just why are why are the older black people, black guys, getting more tickets than the younger ones? It just doesn't make sense. Those, because, so, I mean, I, I'm sorry. So because, yeah, because in other, warnings, in other, in other warnings, charts, okay, warnings. warnings in other in yeah. other charts, uh, the younger guys are getting more than everybody else. With maybe, maybe this is exactly what's going on. I don't know, but I look at that and I say that doesn't make sense. And there's so many little things in here that I look at and say I, I've got more questions. All right, more can I? How does it make sense? Move to. So a, I'm not comfortable with it. Yeah, I'd like to move to a minute to have the chart. I guess stricken from the summary. Yeah, I think it should be. Okay. Which chart is yeah, I mean, I think the, yeah, I think yes, the main I don't know why this is here. This is page, page yeah. three of Francis Franklin. I, yeah, I'm not. I'm just using that as an example, not saying, not picking on this particular one. I'm, I'm, you know, and I, you've done a lot of work. I appreciate that, and you know, and that's impressive, and I'm, and I'm glad to see this. I think so, um, it needs to be refined. I okay, one one option is that we wait one more month, which might feel frustrating for John, but and that people. I mean, one question I had was was uh, were people um, better. Do, did you do better than me, and you read this and thought about it before this meeting? <laughs> did you? You did. Oh, okay. yeah. 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 I've gone through it several times. Several okay. Times. Okay. So maybe maybe it isn't a matter of studying it some more. Well, it doesn't sound like we have much of a choice of waiting if council's going to release it. Mm -hmm. Well, um, we have basically a slot on the agenda that we should bring something because we've got things that council needs to finalize their decisions on. And we were and we were going to hear from the chief about the social worker type right. person, right. and he's not going to be doing that. Right. So I thought maybe releasing this because my concern is is that and maybe it won't happen, but that it will that people will become aware of it. Yes, that people will become aware of it, and that you know they'll be reading and trying interpreting on their own without us introducing, them, and then uh, that will happen no matter what. Well, it's going to happen, right, take, but I'd take, like it take, to happen after I, we, I but maybe we're point. not ready. So yeah. maybe we're not ready. I mean, I think one thing that could be helpful. I'm just, I actually, I'll be honest with you, I, I have not had the time to really study this. Yeah. And I'm impressed with the amount of work, and I wish I knew oh, more about statistics. I wish I knew more about statistics than I do. I um, mean, well, you know, one thought I had was that before giving it to council, mm -hmm. we prepared a very user-friendly cover sheet yes. that would be quite well, maybe we just prepare, prepare, share the summary. Well, I don't know. I mean, who, who would present it? John would present it. I mean, I don't know. If it's presented to the council, don't show all these no, no, I agree things with and, and, no. uh, and try to explain. I mean, it's just got to be. Yeah. The no, I would use the as he said. You, you liked those tables, so I'd use those tables. Yeah, well, I, better I, than I just like that papers. way of doing this. Computing the number as opposed to what kind you did it. Unless there's a good reason to do it the way you did it, and there probably is. No, there's not. Okay. No, no, that's fine. Yeah, we can do that. Um, no, that I mean, my, my it's other information. I, I mean, it, there's, it's, it's really important that we don't claim more for the numbers than the numbers show, and that we be very honest about possible data gaps, which I think you there's try not. to do. You, you know, there's a certain number of folks where you didn't know the race, et cetera, you put that in there. Yeah. It's really important that that be. It's just real. You don't want to overclaim for your data because then people find that you've overclaimed, and then the whole thing gets discredited. And it's a terrible thing for everybody, right? Uh, you know, so we need to be very modest about what it shows. I, I think Cindy's point, or somebody's point, 
I'm sorry, with, that this is a six-year window. And actually, the last year may have been very good. We don't know. And it probably this, the, it's not. It's not. You think it's the same? Yeah, well, I did look year by year. It's not. It's not. <laughs> it's about the same. Uh, I wouldn't go that. It's not better. I don't. Um, I think. Mean, I think mean, they're like a hundred per year. Well, uh, closer to two hundred. Two hundred per year. Two hundred. Well, and that's twelve hundred per six years. Twelve hundred. Yeah. Okay. Two hundred. So that's you know one every you know every two days. Okay. Okay. Well, well I, I just want to make sure that we don't overclaim for it. And I guess I would like a little more time to get comfortable with methodology. And not a lot more time. Probably I just need another conversation. Okay. Yeah, so I think the I think the conversation. I mean, that's okay, okay to wait. Yeah, I, mean, I mean, I had one more. That was my only concern. My main concern was that it be held back and it would be. But anyway. Oh no. I'm, well, okay. So I'm going to make the motion with the amendment that. Um, that this graph about the average number of warnings, race and gender, um, being struck from the from the summary. From the summary, that um, why? What? Why? If it's if you if it's good data like there, like Sarah with all the rest of it, why take it out? Because well, I think it overemphasizes something that's probably not the most important thing in the agree. study. Yeah, <laughs> agree. Yeah, and it makes it look like it is. Yeah, yeah. Uh, um, yeah, so with that, with that graph being struck, um, uh, I move that the justice system task force uh, basically agree that this summary correctly um, reflects the, uh, well, the report I'll, itself. I'll second it so we can talk about it. Okay, <laughs> okay. my suggestion is because it's the committee's not really ready to make a decision tonight on releasing this. Um, so my suggestion is that Beth and John try to skinny this down a little more, um, make it as user friendly as possible. I think the two of you together did you work pretty well on, on writing this together, and to, to try to get it just so it's, it's the everyday person can understand it, the non-data kind of person. Um, so that you guys work this and bring another draft for the next meeting, and you can share it. Two of them are kind of nerdy. Well, well, I would be glad. Is there a third person that you would? Is there a third person? Other than having two. I mean, I think we should. The problem is. I think this report is excellent. I just think there should be a cover page or something that is more away from some of the jargon and the. Discussion of the methodology because just people, that's not, a lot of people can't follow it. I don't think that that should hold up the release of the report. I agree. Well, I. I well, wouldn't worship the release of the report. Yeah, because no. basically, as soon as this gets re released, many, many, many people will give many, many boiled down, more understandable versions of this. Uh huh. And so it will. Like you want to let that, other people do it. Yes, yeah, exactly. Oh, they're they're right. not going to necessarily. If they do it wrong, they'll immediately be, get called out for doing it wrong. Like there's enough people in the population that care about this issue and that can understand this report. Uh, that like it's not. We live in Yellow Springs. Like, this is not going to really be a real problem. Like people will boil it down. It'll, it'll get digested, uh, particularly by the newspaper, and it, they will they will get the facts correct. Furthermore, there's not like this data is. This data is extremely solid. Like there's not. There's no reason to believe that all of those people who were unknown were white. We know of the people that were cited as unknown um, and then cited again with their, with their race noted that, that like those people weren't more white than the population in general. I think you're too close to this, John. There's nothing, like my sense is that you guys just don't want to release it. I'm not actually, if I went back to Beth Crandall and said, and she was like, so what more do they want us to do? I would be like, I ain't got a clue. Like, I have no idea what you guys want. That, like, this is, you just. 
Well, I think there's some very <laughs> Breathe, anxiety it's okay. about how people will perceive this. Are you That's fine. There's nothing to do about that. Well, I would well, suggest that it's not our role. Pat, to if Pat was not willing to sit down with Beth and John to understand the data part better, yeah, and I that you willing to do that too. I know, but I think Pat would be better to work with the two of them. I'm sorry, Dave, but I yeah, not, nothing against you, but I think Pat. She's a good writer. And, and I'd be willing to try, but maybe. I, mean, I think in some ways John is right. Once it's out there, yeah. I mean, to some extent he's correct, you know. But exactly. I, yeah, but I think, oh, we, I, think it's, <laughs> I think it's really, really important that we have, a good, if we're going to release this data, we have to have a good cover sheet or two, which is easily. This is what it means. What do you think, us? Laura? Laura's I being so it. quiet. Well, you know, I. I'm not, I, I failed statistics, <laughs> you know, so like I, I do agree that it needs to be rewritten for the for, yeah, for those yeah, of us who yeah. don't understand key I, I values or whatever. Even though it's also well, they, true what John is saying. Well, despite what, what you think, I'm yeah. good at this. <laughs> yeah, you no, I, I, but I, and <laughs> I'm concerned if you really have all the data, like you're sure that it, yes. you know, this, it, this is how it shakes out. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, the, the report itself is written by Wright State. That's not going to change. But it's, the, it's just this piece that's going to be. Yeah, the presentation of council. I mean, I think this is pretty good, but I think a, a little bit of work on it could yeah, be better, could make it more I mean, clear. Don't you think? Yeah, I think it's very It's close. not that I bad. Really I think it's pretty good. I just think maybe a little. You guys have, like, um, but it's another month till we need. A month to look at this in summary. And like I'm not getting any specific edits. <laughs> like it's not, any no, specific it's not about what? edits. It's not about edits. It's nothing to do with edits. edits. It's so. perfect. But the impact, we're concerned about the impact and how it would be. Okay, so I, I move to call my own question. Yeah. Yeah. Repeat it again, please. Um, so what's the alternative if he, he wants to just get it released? And what's the alternative? When would that happen then? Next like week? the next Monday's meeting. Yeah, that's too soon, I think, probably. So, John, are you opposed to working with Pat and Beth to sort of, you know, work try to like summary a little bit work on the summary and I mean, from my standpoint, I would be in favor of emphasizing caveats about data, et cetera, so that we're out there saying, you know, all this stuff. And then, you know, I'm not saying change the data. I'm saying put all the caveats out there. So if anybody wants to complain, you can say, wait a minute. We're, you know, we're so, so the caveats complain. are the p-values. The p-value is exactly the likelihood that this is You just lost most of the population. The likelihood that the likelihood that this is due to use that language to communicate I'm, with people. I'm just yeah. I'm, well, know, yeah, but we should understand it by now. I do, and I'm pretty. I mean, it's yeah. because you're comparing it to the size of the. But we have set, to think about right? the audience. That yeah, like everything is baked into that. Okay. Like this is this is what is used to determine like whether drugs are safe. This is what is determines like whether cars are safe. Like this okay, is, so there can be a paragraph that says we understand that it's a small community. You know, there are relatively small number of stops, but. This is, you know, this is a statistical, but statistical this is tool designed to allow you to control for that, and we've applied that statistical tool. Exactly. You know, so then and it's I'm reading, I go, okay, yeah. you know, I'm not like, I don't want somebody sitting at home thinking, oh, I got this figured out, and they're full of shit. I want that to be addressed in the thing, so that when they're reading it, they'll think, oh, they're not full of shit. They've thought it through really carefully. Do you think you could talk I'm about that? I'm not sure I can do it. Come on, let me, maybe. Maybe you everybody, we have more people. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be fair, Pat. Okay, I'm, I'm really, I'll do the first, I'll do the first draft. <laughs> <laughs> I'll do a first draft and then other people can jump in. I mean, it seems like you should maybe sit down and meet and, so you, I don't think we need to sit down and meet. I mean, I think I can just do a first draft and another John and other people can. Yeah. I think send it to them and make sure, yeah, since they're the data people and then we talk about it the next meeting and so it's held another month. Yeah. But does it have to be another month? I mean, I, I'm sympathetic to John. He's done a lot of work. We have had time. I feel bad that I haven't focused on it until like <laughs> it's so bad. two minutes before you started talking. <laughs> it's such a bad but I mean, can, is there some way we can, you know, well, we can agree to let and, them. Well, can we get something and have a vote via email or something? No, no, no. it's got to be a public <laughs> Why why does this have to be released right now? Well, it, it I'm, not, I'm not understanding that. It, 
Because they because they have a wonderful completed you know in there. Yeah, exactly. Because you have no actual substantive complaints about it. My the reason. Is I. <laughs> <laughs> well, what can you say to that? Well, I mean, let's let's face it. I mean, I, like I, you know, most of us aren't surprised by it. So it's it's not. What are we trying to protect the community from itself? I mean, it's, so I don't think we should be so worried about the community's response. I just want it to be clear. That's my only concern. Actually, I, I'm, the rest I'm not concerned about. I feel like. Okay, so what have we decided? So, I'm so you're going to, I'm to be a motion. first vote. Uh, uh, so, no, no, so um, even if I lose, I'm going to call this question. Oh, I, I, I move that, that the committee agree that this summary correctly reflects the report given by um, Mike Bottomley of the Statistical Consulting Center. Um, do I get a second? second? Oh, you already seconded it. And then, yeah, well, I'm just calling the question. Okay. Well, I agree. We agree. So, three is in favor. Um, Opposed, or so you don't think it reflects it? I think Holding. the question has nothing to do with the issue at hand. Okay. I just would have to abstain, John. I haven't, I haven't read the report carefully enough. Yeah. And I, I just, I am sorry. Okay. So, that's, that's um, the, the truth. in conclusion, <laughs> So in conclusion, you guys are going to work together. Yeah. So You're going to look at it, and I would suggest three we send it to three, three to two. two. Three to two. Three to two. Three to one. Three to two to two. Zero. Okay. Three to two to two. And, yeah. So, yeah. But we commit that this will happen at the next council yes. meeting. I'm very firm on I that. Mean, and we'll so we're going to let you guys work on it, and we'll actually bring it to the next council meeting, and we'll come back to us. Well, it will be. I can. The cover thing, which is the committee, we get all signed at some at some level. The cover sheet. Uh, we consider this report important because, however, this, however that. Um, but other but wait, see but my sure. understanding is that both it should be shorter, talk less about statistics, and that it well, should I also be that. longer and include <laughs> more caveats about the possibilities of it no, being no, possibly wrong. That isn't what I heard. Because I, I heard, heard all of cover, that. I heard a cover sheet. And that this stays as it is. It looks good. Uh, so, oh, so you're yeah. just having a summary for the summary. A summary for the summary, yeah. It's okay. an introduction. It's more like an introduction for the summary. Mm, the attach. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and vote. A, can, can I make that? A, can I make a motion that we don't do that? I feel like, like, <laughs> like, like no, how can I vote against, against this? Perjury. <laughs> 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 Perjury. <laughs> it's just I, to I make it more it's, understandable. I, I, yeah. But that's not a real problem. It is. So we're finding, some of us are finding it a problem. Yeah. So yeah. Like, yeah. Well, I mean, we have a bunch of people sitting here, John, who are trying hard to, to, to understand it and trying hard to you know, go through this. And, and we've had the data, and we had the data for months. <laughs> so I would say statistically, you should agree that it's a problem. Yeah. There you go. Good but point. no, I hear okay, some people there, saying that there are some other things that need to happen. Just one last check in before we adjourn about next month's agenda. Is there anything new that has to come to that agenda? <laughs> so policy projects will come back. I said I'd work on that one thing. Okay. And you're working on, yeah, what are we doing at the next meeting? So are we going to look at this summary or you're going to work that out? If it has, I just want to be clear. Has the committee agreed you're going to write a little introduction but yes, you're going to work on it, and other people can help. I mean, I'll get, get help from other people, Beth, especially, and John, and then send it out. It'll be a, send out ahead of the meeting. Okay. When is it? Of our next meeting. Our next meeting. Okay, our so next then we will meeting. sign on. Then we'll sign it. Yeah. Okay. So this isn't going to be released at the next council meeting. It won't be released for two council meetings. Which will be uh, after right. our next test for yeah. meeting. And also, what, like, the last on the eve of the election, or? It'll be, you know, it'll be, it'll be probably right before Thanksgiving. I think we need a motion to adjourn. Second. 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 Second.